Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We got another mock draft video. I know I said that we were going to do round two. Decided to scrap that. Thank you guys so much in the Facebook group who went out and did all that work. Um, we're going to do another round one, but we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to do it live, and we do have Mark Jarvis from What's On NFL Draft.com back with us again today. Um, all the links for how you can find us are in the description, but I want to get going here because I know these take a, uh, a good period of time. So let's start right out of the gate with the Arizona Cardinals. No, we're not going to be doing any trades in this mock draft. Let, let's look right out of the gate here. There's some talk that maybe the Cardinals go quarterback. I know that's very unlikely, and we're talking about Dylan Rosen, but let, let's just say that it's a possibility. Would you, as a value standpoint, look at any quarterback with the first overall pick? Kyler Murray, maybe. I, I don't think Dwayne Haskins, I mean, you, you're getting the same kind of style as Rosen with Haskins, so, and, and I would argue Rosen as a prospect was better than Haskins, but Kyler Murray, the type of playmaker he, he is, the type of dynamic guy that he is, um, he makes sense that early, but he's the only quarterback I would say is potentially worth that for the Cardinals. Yeah, now I, I, j just to lay it out a little more specifically, by the way, in this mock draft, um, I'm going to act as sort of the know-nothing GM, and I'm going to defer to Mark as my, my lead scout here. But as the know-nothing guy, tell me a little bit about Rosen, because as I was watching last year, I actually really liked him a lot. So what are your thoughts just in terms of him having a bad year last year and his ability to kind of step up for us this year and be our, our, our quarterback? Well, statistically speaking, sure, he had a bad year, but considering what he was working with and the guys around him, I mean, he was getting beat up bad because of that offensive line. You just got to protect him and let him, um, you know, function inside of the structure, and you're going to have a lot more success with him. Maybe get him some playmakers as well, give him some more opportunities. Um, really only was working with Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald getting up there in age. You need to give Rosen um, a legitimate number one receiver if possible. Um or you could just continue to fortify that offensive line and really protect him well. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and as the de facto GM, I am going to say we're not moving on from Rosen. I don't like that. I do like Rosen. I trust Rosen. I think he's going to be our guy. I just wanted to kind of look at our options there. So would I say that our, our we're kind of looking at either Bosa or Quinnen? Would that be sort of the absolute, these are our top guys right now? Yeah, absolutely. Unless you're looking to trade out the pick, and I assume we're not looking to trade out the pick here and just go best player here. Um, it's between Bosa and Quinn, and really no one else is in the conversation. I know Josh Allen has gotten some buzz, um, you know, an athletic freak, but I don't think he's in the same kind of tier as, uh, as these two. The, the only question I have, and I, I don't know who you had above the other, but there's been some talk. I know Anthony C. in the comments section said we are switching to a 4-3, or a, excuse me, a 3-4 defense, and there's some concern about Bosa being an outside linebacker. Do you have concerns about Bosa playing outside linebacker? Oh, yeah, if you're switching to 3-4, to I would not trust Bose to play outside. I think he can do it, but I think in terms of um, his explosiveness out of his out of his stance as a pass rusher, I think you're going to get a lot, a lot more of him um, from a 4-3 system. So if you're going to play him, you know, hand in the dirt in a 3-4, he's got to bulk up a little bit, and, and it might take away some of that explosiveness. So I'd be concerned trying to play him as an outside linebacker. Okay, yeah, and I know along the defensive line, you know, Gunter is, is mediocre. Uh, we're probably going to end up re-signing him as a free agent. Peters is a decent run defender, but kind of useless at pushing the pocket. Kemdichi is just basically useless, period. So we need a lot of help along the defensive line. Bosa's kind of iffy as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Do you feel like Quinnen's maybe the best option here? Yeah, if we're wor if we're going to be working with a three four, yeah, it's easily Quinnen just because he's more versatile in terms of where you can align him on the inside. Um, I, I think there's an argument for him to be just a straight up better prospect than Bosa, but in terms of the scheme fit, Quinnen all day. Okay, well there you go with the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Quinnen Williams. I almost said the wrong guy. Anyways, so the 49ers now. I'm going to try to drag this out. <laughs> But I don't know if there's necessarily a need to. Uh, let's let's just look around. Let's kind of dance around a little bit. You know, Eric Lee has said that we've invested too much in our defensive line in general. We're talking defensive ends and defensive tackles. There are some questions we've already put a lot into that. And there was talk about he had specifically said Greedy Williams, but a, a cornerback in general. Let's just forget who's on the board. Corner in general, is there anybody at two that we could possibly look at? No, not at two. Okay. <laughs> Reedy maybe Reedy maybe towards, you know, ten ish, but nobody is worth that kind of uh draft capital. All right, let, me, let me just throw one other thing at you and you kinda of mentioned him. 
is there in any capacity a case that could be made that Josh Allen would be a, a pick here over Nick Bosa? No. Josh Allen, I mean, you could argue the athleticism is better, but in terms of what you get, the polish from Nick Bosa, it's, it's not worth going anywhere else. All right, well then with the second overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Nick Bosa, edge rusher out of Ohio State. So moving quickly along here, the New York Jets. Let's see if we can make this a little bit more complicated. Jets fans seem to be 100% unified that we need to um, work on the offense, especially the offensive line. If offensive line were a must, and we're not doing any trades in this, so I, I know the board is kind of stacked a certain way, but if we had to go offense and a specifically offensive line, is there anybody at pick three, top five, that you could maybe see as being a reach here? I think Jawan Taylor and Jonah Williams, if you're really reaching, I think Williams is a little bit too raw right now, but you do have positional versatility with him. You can play him at guard or tackle. Jawan maybe a, a little bit more just traditional right tackle, um, power guy, but I think it's still a reach for either one of them at this point. So looking at our board now, who are sort of the, the next level guys that are on the board that, that you, you just feel – in other words, if we had to reach, who are the guys you're looking at going, man, we messed up, we should have taken that guy? Well, the problem with it is this class is just so defensively loaded. I mean, you're looking at guys like Josh Allen still being on the board. I know some people are you know, kind of souring on Ed, Ed Oliver, but he's he's an option. But you've already invested so much on the defense side of the ball if you're the Jets. You do need help on the offensive side. Um, DK Metcalf, if the testing goes well, and he's supposed to run in the – in the, uh, maybe even four threes now, high four threes, low four fours, and the medicals and all that. Um, if those check out, then I'm thinking maybe Metcalf here give Darnold a weapon. But I would say that offensively speaking, there's just not much to work with here. You're going either tackle with a guy like Williams or Taylor, or you're going receiver and getting a guy like Metcalf. All right. Well, as the uh, the de facto GM, I'm going to somewhat defer to you, but I'm going to give you the the uh, constraints. I need an offensive player to help out our offense. I'm going to need a name from you. <sighs> Put me on the spot. I, I, <laughs> I don't want him to make the big decision. No, I'm, to... I'm, I'm, I'm the bad guy <laughs> making the wrong decision, but you're going to have to pull the trigger. Uh, I'll pull the trigger. Um, you know what? Jonah Williams, as much as you get with the versatility from him and the upside, I think you just can't pass up with Metcalf, the potential for a 6'4", 230 guy who, who runs in the 4'3", threes and is going to jump jump out of the gym in the combine. Give me DK Metcalf. Give Sam Darnold a weapon. With the third overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select DK Metcalf, wide receiver, out of Mississippi. What a horrible pick. How dare you. Shame <laughs> on you. There's so many good players available. <laughs> this is what happens when you can't trade, man. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's tough. <laughs> We're going to get killed in the comment section either way on that pick, so you got to just make a decision there. But, no, I, I do tend to think that's going to be <clears> – <throat> I mean, it is it is a lose-lose. But, man, you look at that Jets team, you did invest in a quarterback. That's that's your cross to bear now. you got to fix that situation. So, I, you know, I don't necessarily disagree that you got to reach if you can't trade. So, anyways, with the fourth pick, we got the Oakland Raiders now. Raiders need a ton of stuff. I don't want to go too in-depth. Raiders fans are pretty protective of their guys. I've pointed out a couple areas that we need to go. You know, if you kind of talk about defensive line, they get defensive. We got this guy, we got that guy. But here, here's the bottom line. And, again, I'm, I'm deferring to my, my lead scout now. I, th there really isn't a position that I'm looking at that if you said this is the top guy, I'm saying no way, that's locked up, man. We already got a guy. I mean, from quarterback, if we had a guy that was just an elite prospect which i know we don't i would be willing to consider it so your burden right now is to, is to tell me who is the top can't miss prospect going to change our franchise who is that guy at the top of our board right now let me defer back to you are you running with Derek Carr for another year yes okay then Kyler murray is not not in our options here as much as i mean well him. well let, let me just say this i mean i don't want to take Kyler murray I, i'm more than comfortable with Derek carr Mm -hmm. especially if it's just for another year. And I know supposedly in the next draft, in the next couple drafts, there are, are much better prospects than what we have now. I am in no hurry to dump him and move on with somebody else, and I'm willing to build for a little bit of time. If you think Murray is just this, like he's going to be the guy, he's he's a safe pick, can't miss, 
then we'll talk about it. But I'm I'm more than comfortable going Derek Carr another year. Yeah. That's difficult because I, I would say he I would say he's can't miss. I think there is the fatal flaw of his height. Okay. But in terms of looking looking ahead, and we can kind of get into that if you want. Of what are we looking at in the upcoming classes? Well, Justin Herbert's an option. I, I'm not sure if I'd put Tua Tagovailoa from Alabama in that same kind of conversation as Justin Herbert. So, I mean, if if we decide not to pull the trigger on Kyler Murray here, if you miss on Justin Herbert next year, we're going to be basically with a mediocre quarterback for two years running. Okay. So, th- picking this early. Do you want do you want to make that move and, and go and try to get a guy as, as special as Kyler Murray and, and make that jump? Or would you rather risk maybe missing out and then riding with Derek Carr as, as far as we, we have to take him? Yeah. All right, so so let me ask you this, just looking at the board, just talent. Who who are our top guys? Is Kyler Murray sitting at the top of the board or I think he's pretty far up there. Um, okay. I don't know if I'd say he's the top guy. Um, Josh Allen's in the mix. Brian Burns stands out to me. Rashawn Gary, if you're a fan of just the raw athleticism. I think Devin White, um, certainly in that top tier. Maybe not, um, you know, he, he he's not in that same tier as the guys like Bosa and Williams, but he's that step down um, with guys like Allen. I'm not sure if anyone at corner really stands out as being worth that that pick. Same with safety. I'm, how are you feeling about the offensive line right now? Well, we, we, like I said, we, we need a little bit of everything everywhere. Um, if, if you've got offensive line at the top, I'm not going to say no to it. We, I mean, it, it, it depends kind of what we're talking about as far as left tackle, right tackle, guard, all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, I, I can't find anybody. Um, Colton Miller obviously was a rookie, so I'm a little wary of saying let's just replace him and move on. But, he, I mean, he was, he was complete garbage. I mean, no offense, Raiders fans, if you liked him, but th- there's no way you guys liked him last year. He was just not good. Um, so, you know, we can have those discussions. I don't know that I'm super. I mean, if you got a guy that can play right tackle that maybe can move to left tackle, we could talk about that. But, yeah, I mean, if, if offensive line is where your head's at, let's let's have that conversation. I mean, Jonah Williams, again, the versatility, it, it certainly could play a role here. But um, having already invested in Colton Miller as the left tackle for the future, it makes me a little bit nervous putting that much yeah, right. into a right tackle. That, that might not be too... Too exciting for the fans. They might not be happy with taking a, a pure right tackle that early. In terms of the edge rush, and as a scout, I should know this, but are we running the 4-3 or 3-4? 4-3. 4-3. See, that makes me a little bit nervous about about Josh Allen because I think he's more of a, just a stand-up edge rusher. I don't think you're going to be able to play him hand in the dirt, and I don't know how successful he's going to be in coverage as a pro. Yeah. That, let me put the caveat. That's assuming there isn't a change. There's been a lot of changes over defenses. There's a couple teams that we're going to talk about that have changed. My understanding is 4-3 for the Raiders still. And at linebacker, who do we got at, at middle linebacker? Uh, just nobody. Um, to hear Whitehead, uh, Markel Lee, Nicholas Morrow. Well, let's go and get a legitimate... I wouldn't say generational linebacker, but uh, okay. a very strong linebacker and a guy who can anchor the defense for years to come in Devin White. I mean, that kind of fits the Raiders' mold of you know playing tough physical defense, brings them back to that type of mentality. All right. With the fourth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Devin White, linebacker out of LSU. So I guess I was a little surprised by that conversation. I <laughs> kind of... I guess you you also kind of called my bluff a little bit. I said even if there's a quarterback, and then when you said let's do quarterback, I was like, wait a minute, I don't know about this. I did not expect that conversation to turn that way, but um, yeah, no, that's uh, that's good. And we, like I said, that's that's what I want with the Raiders. We have a lot of stuff, and I think it's going to take us several years, which is maybe the reason I'm I'm anti quarterback. Not even so much that I like Carr, but just. We we have so many things, and if we just drop a quarterback in here, he doesn't have any. He doesn't have an offensive line. He doesn't have any weapons. It just makes me a little bit nervous. So yeah, I, I like Devin White because it feels like a, a, a relatively safe pick. That's that somebody you can we can start to build around. So um, next up, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, looking at some of the other uh, the the GMs in the comment section, almost everything I've s- seen revolves around defensive back, whether it's cornerback safety lots of people mentioned greedy by name i know quite a while ago when deontay thompson was was a big name up top i had picked him in a mock draft there was no issues with that whatsoever 
Corey in the Facebook group talked about trading back and getting a guy like Chauncey Gardner Johnson. I know we're not trading, and I'm guessing he's not a good value here, but just to give you another idea, another guy saying, hey, we need more defensive backs. When I look at guys like Conti and I look at guys like Grimes, there's just not a whole lot there. Carlton Davis was a rookie, but not a whole lot there either. Maybe he can emerge, but even if he does, we just got nothing really going on here. Taking it a step further now, I know I'm, I've already put some constraints here, but the Bucks do have a new scheme under Todd Bowles. It's pretty clear they're going to be more aggressive. They tend to like physical press man corners. So if I were to say I want defensive backs, first of all, who are you thinking of? And then second of all, who is the guy right now that you said, if, if we're going to switch up, we're going to become much more physical. I want a guy that's going to press you as in it plays a lot of man. Who's that guy? Well, it's tough because really there's two options here at corner that, that are worth that value. And Greedy Williams and Byron Murphy. And, and Greedy definitely has the size that you want. I mean, he really just eats up space. You're not going to get anything by him in the short game. But I'm not sure if I trust him to carry guys upfield and man. So you, you might have to give him a little bit of safety help and, and you know know his athletic limitations early on. Um, Byron Murphy a little bit easier in terms of transitioning between man and zone and, and just kind of doing a, a mixture of things, whatever you want to do scheme-wise. Um, I think he, he fits that a little bit easier, but maybe not the same kind of dominating presence um, t you know, towards the boundary that Greedy is. I think value-wise, Greedy's, Greedy's certainly worth um, a higher pick at this point. It's just it's it's tough investing that much in these guys at pick number five. Are there any other positions that you think might be worth addressing over a corner? I mean, I mean the, the defense in general, um, I, I know they've got some talent along the, the line with uh, Gerald McCoy. Um, but we still need defensive tackle help. We need defensive end help. I, I don't. I don't know if linebacker would be the biggest need. So I'm. I'm just going to say no. Plus, we just got rid of our linebacker. So we'll say not linebacker, but safety, defensive tackle, or or even defensive end at this point uh, with a four three. I, you know, see defensive tackle though. They got Vita Vea also. So I don't know if I want that. So l l I, pass rusher, I guess, is what I'll say. Outside of defensive end, if you want to give me a four three defensive end, excuse me, if not cornerback, 4-3 defensive end, then I'll consider that. I mean, Brian Burns is on the table if you think he's he's worth trusting, it, you know, that his frame's going to hold up. I think, it, I think it can. I think he needs to add a little bit of weight, but I think he's built to come in and start right away as a 4-3 D end as long as he has the entire offseason to, you know, bulk up and, and get to an NFL weight. Rashawn Gary on pure athleticism, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's 270 to 280, and he's you know playing edge like he's 250. I feel like those guys would be a little bit more value-wise um, good investments. I don't think there's the same kind of risk that you run with someone like Greedy. I think Greedy, he could easily flame out if the scheme isn't, isn't favoring him and he doesn't get the proper help he needs. And you got nothing for me at safety at this spot either. It's safety, no, because Deontay Thompson, I mean, he had that fall off towards the end of the season, wasn't the same guy and just um, not as reliable as, as you would expect. And then, I mean, it's way too early for, for Gardner Johnson or a guy like Taylor Rapp. I, I'm not seeing anything at safety unless maybe you want to go out, out left field and go like Mr. Adderley and just – but that's wild at pick number five to go to go Adderley. All right, well then let's look at defensive end. Give me of those two guys, um, which one's a, a better value here? Between I don't think either is either's a great value, but I think Gary, you have a little bit more. I, I wouldn't want to say versatility necessarily because you're going to want to put him down in one spot. Say okay, this is your position um, and build him up, but. Maybe take a little bit longer for Gary to get to his peak, but I think the the ceiling is a lot higher with Gary than Burns. Do you think Gary could possibly be a, and I, I know it's kind of a, a made-up standard, but I'm going to hold it to you anyways. Do you think he's going to be our 10-sack guy, or can he get to that point? Because I'm guessing Burns can. Yeah, Burns can definitely. I think Gary might not have the same kind of numbers as a sack guy, but I think he's going to be a lot more reliable in run defense. Yeah. I think you can trust him, trust him to uh, two gap a lot more effectively. I'm feeling like an NFL owner right now because I want to produce for my fans. I, I yeah. want that revenue coming in. Um, I, I get what you're saying as far as Gary being a good football player. 
and if I'm usually doing what I'm doing, I'm taking best player available, but you're, you're telling me he's going to be against the run, and I'm just rolling my eyes right now. Like, yeah, I don't care. I, I want flashy stuff. Well, let me throw this out there. If Vita Vea, and he had a pretty mediocre first season, if he, yeah. he does, ends up not paying out or Gerald McCoy starts to fall off, you could probably try to move Gary inside if he's not okay. producing big numbers on the outside. So you can move Gary around a little bit. Burns is strictly off the edge. All right. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you on that. We're going to go with the, the intelligent pick, which is, uh, I, I guess, I, I don't want to say the safe pick, but I'm, I'm willing to brave the, the lashing. We're going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the fifth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Rashawn Gary, defensive end, Michigan. All right, we're to the New York Giants now. Giants fans seem pretty scattered in the comments. Some actually came out in favor of Haskins. In the last video, I said I picked Haskins. Nobody liked it, and then we picked Haskins again. A few people did like it. I would say the biggest favorite of everybody right now would be Josh Allen to play opposite of Olivier Vernon. Another thought some brought up um, that I had mentioned previously was before we go out and get a quarterback, why don't we try to build up a little bit, especially this offensive line? I talked about it with the Jets, and some of the Giants fans were like, hey, excuse me, what about us? We also need offensive line help. Um, Specifically, we got Nate Solder over there at left tackle. We just drafted Hernandez to be our left guard. So looking from sort of center to the right, specifically right tackle would be the biggest need, or another guard possibly at right guard. What would be some of our offensive line options at six? I think you're definitely going to want to lean more on like the pure right tackle, right tackle side of things. I would say Cody Ford makes a lot of sense and Jawan Taylor from Florida. I know I mentioned Taylor earlier when discussing who the Jets could possibly go after, but I think both those guys make sense at right tackle. All right, and then we, we, we are talking about a 3-4 here again, unless obviously, again, they've decided to switch something up. But we're, we're talking 3-4 outside of Olivier Vernon. Um, so... Would Josh Allen be the best value player here, or, or do you want to go with, with offensive line? It depends on how you feel about Lorenzo Carter, and I feel like Lorenzo Carter is worth letting develop. Um, I know he didn't have the greatest season, but he was pretty raw, and I really loved him, him coming out last year. So I would say Lorenzo Carter is worth waiting on giving another year to to develop rather than go after Josh Allen, and, and I wouldn't call it a luxury pick to go after Allen, but I think the pieces we already have in place here, it, it's worth waiting it out and, and letting those guys develop and going for a position that's a little bit more need. Okay. All right, so let's say we do want right tackle, and I want a guy that is going to be a pure right tackle, but I do need one name, not two. Who's who's coming up into your brain right now? I'm going to go Jawan Taylor over Cody Ford. I try... I don't want to, you know, refer to it as just SEC pedigree, but I trust that quite a bit more than, than the guys Oklahoma was taking on. And I think Taylor's a little bit more mobile from what I've seen. So I would go Jawan Taylor. With the sixth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select the right tackle of the future, Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, Florida. All right. So next up we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not a huge amount of comments in the uh you know jaguars fans be sure to get in there and by the way if i hadn't said it already the comments are kind of how i go about not only learning but but orchestrating what i do in these things so if you want to leave a comment just type in the name type in jaguars type in lions type in buccaneers because when i go back and look into the comments i don't read all the hundreds of comments i just type in jaguars and then i see what everybody's saying so if you want to get in there and do that then uh, that would help me a lot and also get your opinions out there about the team if we're doing something wrong then say something about it but anyways in the facebook group there was some unanimous consent and that consent was quarterback murray seemed to be everybody's favorite but the um well especially kevin who put it all in all caps but regardless of that quarterback seemed to be the the way everybody was thinking if you look at it specifically the defense is going to be probably still the strength of the team and i'm I'm not saying obviously if we can get a quarterback of the future or somebody that can drag this team get a, a whatever fine but because we have that strong defense maybe it would be smart to just kind of find a a i don't know how to phrase it because i don't want to make it sound like he's a garbage quarterback but maybe a safe low floor kind of quarterback that can just not really blow this for us because our defense is pulling a lot of the weight what are some quarterback options that you would you would say are a good fit for the jaguars you know it's I've seen a lot of people saying that Daniel Jones isn't worth that type of investment, but if you want the safe pick and you trust the line to hold up, Daniel Jones is about as safe as you're going to get right here. 
because Kyler Murray does have the height issue, and, and that's going to be what could be a, just a fatal flaw for his game and, and lead him to failing big time at the next level. Dwayne Haskins is a, is a little bit safer than Murray in terms of the the floor, but I still think he might be a year away from starting just based on pre-snap. He, he does things as well, but post-snap can get a little bit jumbled and, and a little bit too reliant on his first read. Accuracy and mechanics aren't what they're made out to be by the media. And Drew Locke, I think, is also just kind of a project. So if I'm saying I want a very high-floor guy who can step in and start immediately and not shoot this offense in the foot, I'm thinking Daniel Jones. But the potential that you have with someone like Murray or Haskins to get a legitimate franchise guy, it's it's a lot better than what you'd have with Jones. And then the, the caveat you had thrown in there was if there's a good offensive line and the Jaguars do not have a good offensive line. So I want safe, but I also... You know, if, there, if there's a guy that's that's kind of hearing footsteps and whatnot, I, I don't want to ruin him because he's he's just getting pressure constantly. So he's kind of got to be able to handle that a little bit. I know nobody can perfectly handle that. But if somebody's just going to be mentally broken because the offensive line isn't quite working, that that's not going to work. So, I, you know, whether it's his ability to escape or just handle pressure, that might be kind of important if we go quarterback. Otherwise, you know, we could talk offensive line again. I know we've kind of done that with a lot of teams but if, if we're not comfortable with anybody coming in here with this offensive line and not a lot of wide receiver help we, we can go that route as well yeah and if it's the case of the offensive line being bad and him not having a good structure i would pull jones off the board and say he's, he's not available for us okay. because he's going to need that a lot like rosen need, needs it and then it comes down to kyler versus haskins if you are going for a guy who i think can succeed with a bad pocket murray he can take off and run, and he, he can avoid danger a little bit easier. But Haskins, I think, is a little bit more controlled back there, makes some smarter decisions, even though he's not the same type of, you know, I guess, escapability is the right word for it. But he doesn't have the same type of escapability as, as Murray in the pocket. So are you comfortable with, for example, Kyler Murray with this offensive line? I wouldn't say I'm comfortable with either of the guys, but I think Murray... If you're going to have the play completely break down, and, and here's a question for you is, do you feel comfortable? We've got Cam Robinson at left tackle. Are you more concerned about the interior pressure getting through? Uh, it's kind of hard to say that. You could maybe say that, I guess. I'm just concerned across the board, I think, with, with pressure in general. Here, here's, a, here's another thought, though, and it's maybe the reason why not only I'm pushing, but some of the fans are pushing. I feel like we made a push and we just missed. The salary cap wasn't great, but we're going to dump our quarterback. We're going to get our salary cap back. We've got another chance to make a push here. Like, before we got to start giving up on this defense, let's make a push. Let's just go crazy with it. If you think there's any chance, if we listen, free agency, I don't know what the result of that was, but, you know, there's that. We've got some other picks coming up. We try to work on offensive line and wide receivers and stuff. But if I, if I just told you, like, man, I, I want to make a push this year, next year, who, who is that? Do you think Kyler Murray can, can kind of be that guy that maybe can be, like, the flashy? He's He, could, he can get us there? Haskins? Yeah. That way too. If, if we're trying to make that push right now, we gotta go Kyler. Um, Haskins, while he's a little bit safer, he he doesn't offer the same kind of playmaking ability. He's not ready to to handle the kind of chaos um, stepping into the NFL immediately. I think if if we're definitely trying to go after a guy that can and help can help us win immediately and be like not necessarily a surefire thing, but has that shot to to take us to the next level, I would say it's Murray. And why I mentioned interior pressure is. Um, if interior pressure gets through on Murray, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, they don't have that type of ability to, to scramble and get free. They get caught there. Murray can deal with that. And Haskins, if you bring stuff from the edge, I mean, he steps up in the pocket. But if a D tackle gets through, Haskins isn't going anywhere. So I would say, Murray, just based on what you're asking for us um, in terms of how we want to direct this organization, go make a push. And then also just what we're looking at from, from a schematic standpoint, I think Murray is the better fit. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I'm comfortable. Look, the Jaguars made the decision to go all in. So why back out now? Why why say, let's just forget it. Let's rebuild this off. No, forget that, man. You you got the defense still there. So let's just do it. Let's go for it. With the seventh overall pick in the 2019 NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select the quarterback of the future, Kyler Murray, quarterback out of Oklahoma. All right. I like that one. Let's talk about the Detroit Lions now. Lions are an easy team, uh, are, are easy in terms of the, their needs because... If I say anything other than edge, Lions fans are going to try to fight me. So <laughs> in terms of what they're looking for, if you had to give me a 4-3 defensive end right now, who would be that guy? 
first name that jumps out to me is Brian Burns. Just because even though he is on the smaller side right now, I do think, like I said, his frame can hold that kind of weight. And out of everyone that's left, he's he's probably the most polished as a, as a sheer 4-3 defensive end. Good value at 8? I think it's a solid value. I don't think okay. you're you're stealing him by any means, but I think it's it's worth the investment at 8. All right, let's, let's quickly brush a couple other things. I know the Lions have said outright, they did mention free agency, but they did say outright, we are going to heavily pursue tight end. Are you thinking maybe a Hawkinson fan, whatever, is, is maybe becoming a good value, or are we too early for that right now? I think it's too early for Fant. I think if you're going to go after a tight end here, you need a guy who's going to be a legitimate, you know, two-way superstar, whether it's blocking or receiving. I think you can get that in Hawkinson, but compare that to, I guess it would just be a dire need at the edge. I feel like Burns, I wouldn't say is the better value, but I think you're getting a lot more bang for your buck with Burns, who's going to be maybe a 10-sack guy versus Hawkinson, who's going to be a very good player, but maybe not filling up the box score and, and being um, a star for your team. One other thing I'll throw out there, Darius Slay obviously is a talented guy, but our secondary in general is, is pretty not great. Revisiting the cornerback position now that, that we've fallen a little bit, how do you feel about the value of some of those guys over there? And um, is anybody maybe stand out above Brian Burns as a better value at cornerback or safety? I wouldn't say anyone stands out over Burns. I think Reedy's certainly in play here if you really want to make that move, but I, I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable with going for Burns here. All right, well, let's just do it then. With the eighth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Brian Burns, edge rusher, Florida State. So that was nice and easy. I like when that happens. Next up, we've got the Buffalo Bills now. The, the Bills are sort of that perfect example when I always talk about we need to... I, I know NFL teams don't do this, so maybe I'm wrong, but it, but in my mind, drafting a quarterback when you don't have offensive line, wide receiver, tight end, you've got nothing, you're just sabotaging yourself. And this is the perfect example because I don't see anything except Allen in the middle of, of this nightmare. We don't have wide receivers that I like. We don't have an offensive line that I like. We don't have tight ends that I like. Even the running backs, you know, I know LaShawn McCoy's a big name. I'm a little iffy on on his top end especially at this point of his career i wouldn't exactly say elite in my mind we've set him up to fail that's just kind of how i feel about it i know you got the quarterback you want to get all that stuff we maybe just did that with the jaguars so i can't super talk crazy right now but at this point we we made our bed we got to fix it and i know one one pick isn't going to turn this whole thing around but if i told you i need instant impact on the offense whether it's a a stalwart tackle that's going to protect our guy for a long time a a can't miss wide receiver whatever it is i want you to to make sure that we get a good quality offensive player to help our quarterback who are you going to give me who do we have at right tackle because i know we got deon dawkins at left tackle right i know we got uh, deon dawkins and jordan mills are our tackles uh wyatt teller was kind of a younger guy at guard but um you know, he's, he hasn't really proven to be anything. Uh, John Miller, Vladimir Dukas, uh, Russell Bodine. I mean, again, I, I, I don't really care for any of these guys. And I can't even say Wyatt Teller maybe could develop. Of course he can. You're getting We're, we're not talking about a first-round guy that we took that we expect to, to do super amazing things. So pretty much anywhere along this offensive line. But, but uh, yeah, tackle's not an issue. If you've got a guy, just give me the name. I'm going to go ahead and say Cody Ford. Okay. I think he gives us a, a big body at right tackle who can just bully guys. Maybe he could move him to guard if uh, if his mobility seems to be an issue as he gets going through his career. But I'm not seeing anyone at receiver that, that stands out with Metcalf off the board. So I'm not sure if we can get any weapons for Josh Allen. I think shoring up the offensive line is probably the best move. Okay, yeah, and, and, and you know, De- Deion Dawkins isn't great, and he actually seemed to regress, but you know, stay, maybe staying away from left tackle would probably be the right option there. But um, with the ninth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Cody Ford, right tackle, Oklahoma. All right. Next up, Denver Broncos. The comments on Denver are kind of all over the place. Uh, most either want a quarterback. Supposedly the Broncos have said outright that they want a quarterback, although I don't know how much I trust those kinds of conversations at this point. But I know Craig Naughton had mentioned uh, quarterback or offensive line are the top priorities. Juan Gonzalez in the comments section said quarterback and cornerback are the top priorities. Homer building maintenance, shameless plug in the comments section, kind of echoed Juan, said uh, specifically Drew Locke or DeAndre Baker, so quarterback or cornerback. And uh, Brandon Caratazolo in the comments 
likes Drew Locke as well. So first of all, we've had a couple people mention Drew Locke. Do you think he's a possibility here? Well, you're the know nothing GM. Yeah. Elway, and I'm going to resort to you. And I've heard you love Drew Locke quite a bit, John Elway. <laughs> so all these rumors flying about that you love Drew Locke. Do you love Drew Locke? I mean, I, I'm I'm going to be the anti Elway and actually defer to the people that do know and say, yes, I love him, but I'm going to defer to your expertise and uh, not pick him if you don't love him. I think if you're looking purely at the ceiling, I think his ceiling is just a tad bit higher than Haskins. I feel like Haskins would be the better bet. Just just in terms of the, the floor is there for Haskins, you, you, you know if you put Haskins in, um, he can at least consistently – Throw an accurate ball in the intermediate game, get it to get it to playmakers, and, and let them pick up yards after the catch. Drew Locke, I know the accuracy improved a little bit, but the footwork still worries me. Both guys have mechanical issues. Both have some flashes of accuracy issues. Drew Locke's the better athlete. Drew Locke, I think, I wouldn't say can win outside of structure better necessarily. Haskins a little bit easier in terms of moving around the pocket. Drew Locke not as polished in that regard. It's a toss-up, man. It really just depends on, on like, a pick your flavor. I would say I'm leaning Haskins if we're really going to push for quarterback here. All right, well, let's let's kind of back away from it a little bit then and just look at some other options. Um, I know that's sort of what the comment section was saying, but some other things that were brought up, cornerback and also offensive line. We, we, we've done a lot more offensive linemen than I expected to go at this point, but I kind of want to start there um, just because with Vic Fangio going over, I know there's the, the corners aren't great, but I saw what he did with Chicago. And I can tell you right now, Prince of Mukamura should not be a top-10 guy. He's never been a top-10 guy. But when Vic uh, Fangio got a hold of that, the, everybody in that secondary, you had two years in a row the Bears had the number one safety in the NFL. You had guys like Kyle Fuller who are talented, but he took them to the next level. So I, I'm, I'm confident, whether it's his scheme or whatever it is, these corners are going to get better. I don't know what their top end is, but they're going to get better. Let's talk offensive line because we've got a defensive-minded head coach. Offense might be the biggest need. If we take a, a break from quarterback, who are we looking at, at at offensive line maybe that could be an option here? And we've been jumping through guys like Taylor, Cody Ford, and, and Jonah Williams is on the board, but I'm not sure if you want to – And I know Garrett Bowles has not been great so yeah. far in his career, but I think we've invested in him. We need to give him more opportunities, maybe Great. see it a year of what he can do. Um and Jonah Williams, I think, if we draft him, people are going to want to see us play him at left tackle. They're going to want him to be that franchise guy. I think you could play him at guard, but it's – I guess you could try him at right tackle if, if you really wanted to and, and just kind of plug him wherever you want him to on the line. But um, I'm just not sure if that would be the worth the investment of a quarterback, especially with the, the problems we'd have with quarterback in the past. Is, is there any interior guys that you like? At uh, you know we're we're sitting at ten now. I I love Chris Lindstrom from Boston College, but I don't think he's worth this. I think we can get him later on. Okay. I don't see a team taking Lindstrom in the top twenty, so maybe potentially trade back up yeah. uh, later on and come get Lind Chris Lindstrom later on. But he might even be available in, in the second if he falls. All right, then let's let's revisit uh, cornerback for a moment because they they really don't have. Um, a, a, a ton of talent. I know they have they have names. Uh, Chris Harris, I stand correct. Chris Harris is awesome. But um, outside of that, let, let's say we did want to get a a second guy and, and a younger, talented guy that Vic Fangio can really build and mold up. Who's sort of that guy that's in your mind could be the the uh, cornerback for this team? Greedy certainly stands out in that regard, and I think it really again just comes down to Greedy and Byron Murphy yeah. at this point. And, it, again, it's just really based on what you want. Murphy, you've got a little bit more versatility with him. You can play him uh, as a nickel corner if you need to. Um, Greedy, a little bit more of that you know, space-filling boundary corner who's a lock for the outside. I think Greedy is, is probably the pick there if you're going to corner. All right. Well, in terms of value, then, let's break it down that way. Between our quarterback options and our cornerback op options, which which are you kind of leaning toward? Because I'm, I'm pretty open to either of those options right now. I would say quarterback. We, we have the need. I mean, I know we just got Flacco, but we still definitely need a, a guy that we can make a franchise guy, maybe sit him for a year. And this is where Locke and, and Haskins you know, give him a year to develop and, and let Flacco or Case Keenum run the show for a year. And just 
Haskins wasn't supposed to be available here. I'm, I'm stunned that no one has moved up to go get him. So Haskins available at 10, I mean, that's kind of a best-case scenario for, for the quarterback position, believe, if we believe in Haskins. Yeah, um, that makes sense, and I'm about ready to turn in the card, but, but you, you brought up a pretty good point. We have the ability to sit somebody a year if we want to develop them. If there's somebody on the board that you feel like has a huge amount of upside but they're going to need a year, we've got a real good opportunity here. Is there anybody that you really like that maybe would be above Haskins who could probably start right away? Not this early. I would say Stidham is really intriguing for for maybe round two, but I, I don't think he's near the, the same level of mental uh, preparedness as, as someone like Locke or Haskins. I'm going to say go Haskins here. I think he can sit a year, develop, fix his mechanics, and then come in and be a, a quality starter for us next year. With the 10th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. Yeah, that's going to help out the team a lot. Obviously, as I said, Vic Fangio, I think, is going to do wonders. If he does it even half the job he did with the Bears, that defense is going to be phenomenal. But uh, we got to get this offense going. So now at uh, pick 11, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals, and we've kind of duplicated the issue we had last week. We do not have Devin White. Um, with that need at linebacker, is there any other linebacker that you could see possibly being a value at 11? Some people would argue Mac Wilson on athletic upside. I would disagree. I don't think Mac Wilson is anywhere near polished enough to be worth the 11 pick. Maybe Devin Bush. I think Devin Bush, while it would still be a little bit of a reach in terms of the value, I think he's a lot higher floor than someone like Wilson. But outside of those, I mean, him, uh, Bush, Wilson, White, those are the big three. White's gone, so he's, he's not available. So between Wilson and Bush, if we had to go linebacker, I would say Bush, but I'd look other, uh, other places first. Okay, let's, so let's look at another major flaw, and I know we've, we've beat this to death, but offensive line is a problem. Uh, Jake Fisher, Bobby Hart, Andre Smith, Cedric Agbuahi, they're all free agents coming up this year. Obviously, we're probably going to resign some of these guys, but that becomes problematic. Uh, I think Cordy Glenn has fallen off uh, at guard. Bowling isn't what he used to be. Uh, Redmond, I don't think, has ever been anything. Bowling and Westerman are both 2020 free agents. So it's a bad situation that's going to be continually getting worse and worse. Everybody seems to want linebacker, but I, I don't really see a huge pressing need. We're not a Super Bowl caliber team that just needs a linebacker. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to freak out and get a... a guy who is a good value at 25 at linebacker because we have plenty of other needs but you know billy price was one of the guys that we took which which actually makes me really nervous with some of these earlier uh interior guys he's not really panning out but if there was somebody let's say interior i know you said lindstrom or exterior for this team i I mean i hate to defer to you and say which guys are you looking at because we've kind of already talked about it but is there anybody that you can kind of think of that that makes some sense, especially if we're going to be looking to get a quarterback of the future in the very near future. Let's focus on maybe pass blocking, maybe get a stalwart left tackle, right tackle. Pass protection is going to be our biggest issue. I think Williams is a good fit here because Cordy Glenn getting out there in age, uh, maybe only going to be around for another couple of years. And, and I'm just curious to know how long you think we're going to have with Cordy Glenn. And if we take Jonah Williams, do we have a plan where we want to eventually develop him into a left tackle? Do we want to just have him at guard? I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with bowling at left guard, but you could kind of really slot Jonah Williams anywhere else you want on that line. It's, it's early, but Dalton Risner, if you really wanted to, to go for a power guy more than more than a finesse guy like like Williams, I think Dalton Risner from Kansas State makes a little bit of sense, but maybe not the best value necessarily. Lindstrom, I think he's probably the safest safest of all these guys, but I know you're a little bit nervous about going after an interior guy after Billy Price having a rough rookie season. And then the the only thing I want to kind of brush on because I'm looking at uh, the board that I have here, quite a few guys are falling quite a bit. Uh, we still got Josh Allen. Um, Ed Oliver is still there. Do you, do you feel like we're kind of to the point with any of these guys, you know, particularly Josh Allen, where it's it's kind of into that we, we, we need to really take a strong look regardless of need, or are you good with just trying to fill some of these holes that we have? Honestly, I'm good with trying to fill some of the holes because I don't know. I know the Bengals already have Carl Lawson, kind of that edge rush guy, a little bit lighter, but... I, I mean, I don't think he's worth upgrading on right now. I think he's been a, a serviceable guy. Um, he's had some pretty good sack totals and, and been productive for them. 
I would say Ed Oliver's a maybe. Who, who do we have um, beside Geno Atkins at D-tackle? Is it Andrew Billings? Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I kind of like our defensive tackles a little bit. So I, I don't I don't know that I would even go there. I mean, it would only be if you, you in your mind Ed Oliver is just top tier. We got to take him. But if, if if he's even remotely close to some of the other guys that we can use to fill in some actual needs, I, I'm not interested at all. Yeah, I'd be much more interested in going on the offensive side and going on the offensive line, whether it's Jonah Williams or Chris Lindstrom at guard. I just don't think Ed, while Ed Oliver is is a great talent, I think he's a little bit of a luxury pick considering the needs we have on the offensive. With the 11th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. I do, I do like that a lot because, you know, some people are concerned about where is he going to play. Can he be left tackle? Is he a better right tackle? Is he going to be a guard? I don't care because we need a little bit of everything. So, you know, let let's play him where he think he's best, and if we can develop him into our future left tackle to take over at that spot eventually, whatever. If not, again, we got needs everywhere. So I I, I feel very comfortable with Jonah Williams there out of Alabama. Um, next up, we got the Green Bay Packers, and I, I can tell you right now, I'm ready to just turn in the card. But let me just turn it over to you and let you kind of uh, fill in some of the blanks here. The Packers do need some help at safety. We need uh, a lot of edge rush help. We need some guard help. You know, Lindstrom is maybe an option here. What kind of jumps out to you at this spot? Well, one name that I've seen brought up a lot is, is T.J. Hawkinson at tight end, but I feel like I know who you're running to turn turn the card for. And, you know, I was thinking, okay, if Ja'Kai Plate's available here, that's a very good pick. But we have Josh Allen available at pick number 12. Uh, I mean, not not the blue chip guy that Bosa or Williams is, but he's right up in that top tier and, and kind of can come in and start and star immediately. Are we sprinting to the podium to select Josh Allen? That's exactly who I was sprinting for. Yeah, you good All with right. it? <laughs> let's just let's, run let's just do it, man. That's uh, I mean that's 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 uh, I I haven't seen Josh Allen fall to twelve in quite a long time. So if if this were to actually happen and the Packers didn't have to trade up to get him, I mean this would be about as simple as as the year they took Ha Ha Clinton Dix when he fell and the need at safety was that big. So. Not even a question. At 12, the Green Bay Packers select Josh Allen, edge rusher out of Kentucky. Um, I suppose since we kind of flew through that really quick, tell me a little bit about Josh Allen, some of his attributes and some of his upside. Well, just purely speaking of him as an athlete, he's one of the best in the class. I mean, moved from off-ball linebacker as a junior to more of a legitimate edge rush role as a senior. He's still coming along with his technique, but in terms of his bend and just what he can do, um, just coming off the edges and outside linebacker, you're going to get some serious production out of him as long as he can just focus on get after the quarterback and, and hone in the craft. But again, he is raw, so it might take a year or two to come on, but he's worth that kind of investment. Oh, I hate to hear that. <laughs> I hear that all the time with the pack. Oh, Kevin King is going to be a year. Yeah, sure. I've heard that before. <laughs> Three years later. Anyways, moving on with the Miami Dolphins now. I kind of hate to sit here and not talk quarterback, but I'll be honest, the comment section is pretty unanimous. They're, they're just not feeling it, man, and it shocks me because our need is so completely dire. So we, we can talk about that, and I'd love to get your opinion on, on the quarterback. But it seems as though edge rusher is our top priority. W- what is our – obviously the top guys are gone, but we are all the way down to 13. What What is kind of your thought on some of the good edge rush prospects sitting in the middle of the first round? We're running a 4-3, right? Yeah. I mean, Burns, Gary are gone. There is really nobody that I love at this spot. I mean, Ja'Kai Plight's too small for, for that kind of role. Cleveland uh, Furl, I know, has some fans. Maybe Montez Sweat. You know what? I'm not let, let me, let me, I, I, I'm going to stop you real quick. I believe they're switching over to a 3-4 okay. this year. So there, there actually is that. I, I, I think that was part of the reason why some people are, are jumping in there. So they, part of the problem is when you make a switch like that, obviously, is that you've got a bunch of 4-3 defensive ends. If you want to switch, and 3-4-4-3 I, three, four, four, three is overblown, right? It, it's, there's a lot of hybrid type stuff going yeah. on. But if we're going to play any 3-4 whatsoever, we got to have at least somebody that can play 3-4 outside linebacker. So I, I, I misdirected you for a second there. If we're looking for a 3-4 outside linebacker, is there any of those guys that are available? Oh, yeah, Ja'Kai Plight. Okay. He's the only guy I think that makes a lot of sense at this point. He's probably the top edge rusher left on the board, and there's really no one that's even contesting him in that regard. Um, yeah, I would say it's definitely Ja'Kai Plight if we're looking to go for 
an outside linebacker as an edge rusher. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I want to hear for for a moment any thoughts you have at quarterback. But you know, it, it almost seems like I remember when the Packers switched over to Dom Capers' three four system. It's like you you gotta supply your defensive guy with that that main pass rush piece. The Packers went out and got Clay Matthews to be that guy. Um, so I, I, I feel like as long as you're telling me Ja'Kai Polite's a good value at 13, I'm comfortable with it. But but give me your thoughts in general about quarterback at this spot. Is there anybody that you like that you think is a good value maybe we should look at over Ja'Kai Polite right now? Well, let me just add with the Ja'Kai Polite. Sure. Um, it's just like like you said, when you're switching the schemes, you've got to go and get a guy who can just be an instant impact guy because all, all your old guys, maybe they can make the transition, maybe they can't. Um, you don't have a defined, you know, this is our pass rusher, this is our playmaker. So transitioning that scheme, Ja'Kai Plight makes a lot of sense to be that guy. A quarterback, I mean, it's Daniel Jones and Drew Locke, really, the only two guys that I think are in play here. Drew Locke, and, and my question to you as the, as the GM is this, what's the deal with Tannehill? Or are we dumping him? Or are we, you know, moving along? Or what's the, what's the plan there with quarterback? Well, that, that's kind of what I was, was getting at, is I feel like we don't really have anybody that we can rely on. Tannehill, as best as I can tell, is gone, and even if he's not, I mean, he is just, you know, I, I don't want to say I've been a defender of Tannehill, but I felt like for quite a while it was maybe people were a little too hard on him. It, it's, it's completely indefensible, his play right now. I mean, I know we got Luke Falk <laughs> as, a, no, as an option. Let me rewind you back to free agency, and let's see if you can remember as, as a GM and, and run your mind through it. What happened with Tannehill? Did we sign him back or did we let him go? Um, because if we sign him back, we need a quarterback here, no yeah, matter what. That, that's, like I said, that is sort of sort of my issue. We, we have to have a quarterback. If we don't get a quarterback, we're, we're in my mind, we're, we're tanking. You know what yeah, I mean? if we don't have a quarterback and we let Tannehill go, we're tanking. Right. We're just straight up tanking. Right. And it, But that's kind of my point was, even if we, even if we keep Tannehill, we're kind of tanking a little bit. And I don't I don't mean to be super harsh, Dolphins fans. If, if some of you are still Tannehill fans, I apologize for that. But I mean, it's just, we're not going to get there with anybody that we have, whether it's Tannehill, Osweiler, Falk, Fails, Ruddick. I don't care who it is. Nobody's going to get us even to the playoffs. So we can take a Jakai Polite and and start to build because there's no question we're in a rebuild anyways. Or we can get our quarterback of the future right now. I th- those are our options, and and all I can tell you is Dolphins fans don't either don't seem too concerned because they want to just go in a different direction. I know there was talk a long time ago that the Dolphins weren't looking at quarterback; they were going to defer that. But yeah, as as the GM sitting in my seat right now, I'm I'm having some serious heart palpitations looking at my my depth chart at cornerback. So those are our options. We can start to build where it, it makes sense. And if you're telling me Jakai Polite is the best player. Let's go there, and we'll just we'll make do with whatever we can. If we can squeak out three or four wins, that's what we're going to do. Otherwise, if you're telling me that we do have a quarterback of the future, let's let's swing at it. But I'm I'm I don't want to reach at at quarterback, I guess, because no, we don't have a quarterback. But that just is what it is. Yeah, I would say there's no quarterback of the future here. I mean, Daniel Jones, I think, could be a quality starter, maybe not a Pro Bowler type guy. Drew Locke has the Pro Bowler upside, but he's got to develop a little bit and grow. I think when you compare these to, to guys that could possibly get next year, let's say we, we really struggle next year, and, and, and let's be honest, we might go 3-13 and 13 without, a, without a good quarterback and have one of the top picks. Maybe we could get a guy like Justin Herbert. Maybe we could get maybe Tua. So I think if we get polite here, we give someone to, to our defense that can come in and be a playmaker and, and help us make that transition scheme-wise – Whereas at quarterback, if we go and invest in, in someone like Drew Locke, let's say, we're tied to him for the next couple of years, maybe not maybe not worth that type of investment, and then our defense really doesn't make the transition easy. I would say Ja'Kai Plight. As long as we either, by having Tannehill locked up for another year or two or pick up someone in free agency, whatever we did to get a quarterback as, as a placeholder, I would say Plight, and then we can go after quarterback next year. And that's, you know, I... You're not supposed to say it as the GM of a team, but but if I'm looking at it, and again, there's going to be some quarterbacks next year. If we don't get a quarterback, there's no way in the world we don't have a top five pick. There's there's a very good there, there's a better chance we have the number one overall pick than we have the number six or later overall pick. Is is kind of the way I'm viewing it. So you don't want to necessarily say you're tanking, and you're not trying to tell anybody to tank. But by not taking a quarterback, that's essentially what we're doing. So. I would agree. Let, let's get a solid piece for our defense. We'll, we'll give it the old college try. 
uh, in 20, uh, 2019. And then next year we're going to reboot. And, and throughout this draft, we're going to try to build pieces, understanding full well that next year we're going to get the quarterback of the future. But as of right now, with the 13th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins select Ja'Kai Polite, edge rusher, out of Florida. So that's a pretty painful pick because you, you know it's over before it even starts, and that's, that's not a great situation to be in. But I think rather than trying to make a swing at 2019 and still missing the playoffs and possibly sabotaging our team because we took a mid-tier quarterback. Let's just do it the right way. Let's get actual solid players. You know, if, if something comes up, we'll, we'll look at a free agent quarterback or something, but I, I feel like that was probably the best option for us. So next up, we got the Atlanta Falcons on the clock at 14. A little bit of a disagreement for Falcons fans. I think it's going to start on defense. You look at uh, Rohan in the comments section. He wants pass rusher. Uh, Jazzy jumped up and argued that defensive tackle was more important. Jaden and uh, Tavon agreed that uh, they need defensive tackle. Either way, we're looking at either defensive tackle or 4-3 defensive end. W- what are some of our options at, at uh, those two positions? I don't think we really even need to consider options because the best 4-3 DN probably on the board here is, I mean, just looking through, I really am not even seeing one. Montez Sweat and Cleveland Furl, yeah. I guess, are up, but... Ed Oliver's available. We have the need at D-tackle. He's the best pass-rushing defensive lineman um, outside of maybe Quinn and Williams. Let's go get Ed Oliver and just plant him in there and start immediately. I, yeah, I agree. And, and Cedric in the comments section mentioned it. If you didn't say it, I was going to say there's a pretty good compromise here with getting a defensive tackle but also somebody that can provide that pass rush. Um, I, I, I feel like this is actually pretty similar to the Packers getting Josh Allen at 12. Ed Oliver falling to Atlanta is, is got to be a dream scenario. Let me know in the comments section if you disagree. But uh, with the 14th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle out of Houston. Great fit in that 4-3 scheme. He's going to provide a lot. Anyways, let's move on to the Washington Redskins now. Obviously, quarterback is a, is a really big need. We've had some teams that maybe could have used it, like Miami, that have deferred and decided to pass, so that's going to help us a little bit. As far as the Washington Redskins are concerned, we're looking at quarterback, but it's, it's another situation where I'm not super comfortable with our offensive line. I'm not super comfortable with our wide receivers. Who's going to be a quarterback, if there is one in your mind, that's going to be able to come in that, similar to like we talked about before, isn't going to break. Maybe we'll take Daniel Jones off the board. That that can come in. That can be steady. But that's somebody that we can develop in the midst of turmoil. That can come through this on the other side as as a pretty solid guy. As we continue to develop offensive line and wide receiver talent. One thing I would add with Jones is is in terms of him breaking. It's only if his line is horrendous. So what are we looking at here with our offensive line? How much do you trust them? Oh man, it's uh, Chase Rulier, however you pronounce that in the in the center is is average at best. Um, our, our guards, we, we do have Scherf, who I guess is, is pretty talented. He ended on IR. And if you just look at some of these guys, how many of these guys ended up on IR, you know, maybe they can come back and, and be pretty dominant. Um, some of them you got to kind of wonder, especially with their age and the injury history. Ari Quanjo, I don't think we're going to get anything out of him. Uh, Sean uh, Lavau, Lalvo, again, however you say his name. Um, I don't know what we're going to get out of him. Uh, he's never really been anything. He's getting at the end of his career as it is. Uh, if you look at the tackle situation, Trent Williams isn't horrible. I mean, it, it, it's kind of up in the air. I, I remember with the Arizona Cardinals looking at it and saying that they were bad, but they had a lot of guys on IR that are going to come back and they're going to be fine. The offensive line was terrible this last year. So maybe they're going to get a lot better, but I don't really trust that this is going to be go from a terrible offensive line to a good offensive line. It'll probably improve, but it, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be a good offensive line next year. I just think we have two options here, and we need a quarterback because Alex yeah. Smith being out, he's, let's be honest, he's probably done with football. He's probably not coming back. So we need somebody. I don't think we can afford to wait a year and hopefully get someone next year because our jobs are probably going to be on the line if we don't at least put up a decent performance this year. Um, you know, even even with the issues of quarterback, you know, we can't, we can't trot out Josh Johnson or, you know, some, you know, pick up off free agency we, we can't do that we got to get a get a quarterback and i trust the left side of the offensive line maybe not the right side as much but um we do have sheriff at left guard right now right guard yeah, yeah yeah i trust the left side fine right right side maybe not as much but i think while drew lock is the better athlete i think there are concerns of how well does he does he navigate the pocket and either one of these guys we take and i think again we definitely got to go quarterback here jones or lock Either one of these guys, they're going to take some hits. They're going to have to power through. 
I would say Jones is the safer bet. I think he can come in day one and be reliable, can move the chains and, and conduct this offense in a way that I don't know Drew Locke can. And right now we need a guy who can come in and just be maybe not necessarily a game manager uh, only, but I think Jones comes in at least a game manager level. You can potentially build him up from there. Yeah, and, and you know, if you look at the quarterbacks they've had, they go out and get Alex Smith. I mean, it, you, you got to feel like they're okay with kind of going with that safe type of just solid, again, not game manager, but just somebody that's just going to be a solid contributor. So that does make a lot of sense for me. With the 15th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Daniel Jones, quarterback out of Duke. All right. Carolina Panthers are up. I know last time we did a video, we talked a lot about the trenches and how the identity of the team was defensive tackle. That felt to be like uh, the need in the comment section. But I want to highlight a different need that I think this team uh, really has. And I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not in love with the corners. I don't think our corners are very good. We haven't really looked at corner all that much yet, so they're still up there. We again need some offensive line help, but uh, we, we've really hammered that in this draft so far. Even if Dante Jackson is... Um, taking a step on our team, we're going to need a lot of help there. Again, looking back at corners, we're all the way down to 16 now. Who's somebody that you're looking at that maybe is an option for us here? Well, Dante Jackson, I'm assuming we're going to play him in the nickel mostly just because of his size. Maybe he could play outside if you really wanted to, but I, I trust him more than nickel. Get a big outside corner, Greedy Williams. That's that's who I'm feeling here. He's just physical guy, can lock up um, most wide receiver ones throughout the league if if he's playing on a good day, you know, he has some lapses. He'll have some issues, um, you know, here and there. And, and you've got to work through those ebbs and, and trust him. But I think you do have legitimate cornerback one ability with him. Okay. Um, and then before we turn in the car, just, just value in general. Uh, there are some other needs. I, I don't, I don't want to rush too quickly. If, if there's somebody else that stands out, that's a real good option. I know I said offensive line. I think tight end, Olsen's kind of coming toward the end of his career. And then we, we, we did draft somebody, but I don't think he's going to do very much. Edge rush is a huge need for this team if you got a 4-3 defensive end. Um, if you got anybody that's standing out, speak now or forever hold your peace. I would say with Olsen then having invested a fourth in Ian Thomas last year, I would I would hold off on, on tight end. It was Ian Thomas, correct? Yeah. Okay. I would hold off on tight end. Edge, I'm not really feeling Furl or Montez Sweat. I don't think either of those guys are going to come in and be, you know, can sack guys, which, like you mentioned, you kind of want that. If you're going to invest a first rounder in a guy, you have to believe they'll be that. I don't see that with either of those guys. So I would say greedy value-wise makes sense here, but also positional and just what the team's looking for. With the 16th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Greedy Williams, cornerback, LSU. All right, moving on now with the Cleveland Browns. There's not a lot of uh, talk going on with the Cleveland Browns fans, but I did hear a good amount about defensive tackle. Obviously, that's a pretty big need in the middle. Last time we had Simmons go. I know there's some issues with his off, off the field, and now we got injury concerns, so he's probably not a great value here at 17, but at the time, people love that pick, so we're kind of looking that route. Ogan Joby isn't exactly a stud overall, but he is pretty solid against the run. So if I were to turn to you and say, I'd like a defensive tackle, but I, I kind of need some ability as as a pressure guy, as a, as a get-up-the-field kind of a guy, do you have a defensive tackle that is that is a good value here, but also at least provides something in terms of being able to push the pocket? I think that you could kind of specialize here, maybe invest heavily in a guy who's more about all, all pass rush, maybe go after someone like Draymond Jones or... or um, I guess you could throw in Jerry Tillery, but I think both of those are a little bit rich for me just because I don't trust them at all in run defense. Or I don't trust Jones at all in run defense. Uh, Tillery is kind of hot cold. I would say Christian Wilkins, um, you know, locker room leader, everything you want in terms of a, a guy from a character perspective and who you're getting as a person, but also well-rounded, good athlete, um, has kind of become a little bit underrated this past, uh, this past season just because he was so hyped up. But I think... He's reliable. He can do both. Uh, he can function both in the pass and the rush game. Uh, yeah, I would just say he's he's the most complete tap on the or defensive tap on the board right here, and I would say he's worth that investment at seventeen. Yeah, I, I like that pick, and I, I'm I'm really starting to like Christian Wilkins just from what I'm hearing as far as off the field. A, a couple things I want to throw at you just just to kind of uh, run past your brain, see if anything stands out. 
could use some linebacker help. And also, I, I do like the idea of providing a second corner opposite Ward if, if uh, there was somebody available that you like there. Um, outside of Wilkins, if, if you feel like he's maybe a, a slight reach, is there somebody at linebacker or corner that, that you feel like is, is a much better value? I mean, Murphy um, at corner maybe kind of getting to that kind of range. But I would say linebacker, Devin Bush at 17 would be a little bit of a reach. So I would say Bush is not on the table here. It'd be between, uh, it'd be between Wilkins and, and uh, Wilkins and Byron Murphy. And I would say I'm leaning towards Wilkins. Yeah, I, I know on, on my uh, board at NFLBigBoard.com, I got Byron Murphy at 11, Christian Wilkins at 14. So it's not a, it's not only not only a big difference between the two, but both of them are a great value at 17. So for me personally, I'm going to go with the 17th overall pick, the Cleveland Browns select Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle out of Clemson. Uh, they, they get a real good character guy. They get a great athlete. They get the defensive tackle that they want. I agree with you. I think that's a, a, a great fit and a great pick for that team. And w one thing I would throw out to consider, um, you know, I know we already turned in the card, but if we re replayed it and looked through it, one thing that would have to play into it is what are we looking at in terms of defensive line and corners further on in the draft? Because looking further to, like, the second round, you could have, like Tillery, I mentioned, Charles O'Menohue from Texas at, at uh, D-Tackle. Those guys would make sense, maybe not as polished as Wilkins. They're not as well-rounded, but they have upside. And then looking at corner later on, you've got some longer guys, Jawan Williams from Vanderbilt, um, Justin Lane from Michigan State. A lot of these guys um, you know, could end up being where, okay, what are we looking at in round two? Who can we get round two? And then make the decision in round one based upon that. Because the difference between Wilkins and Murphy, like you mentioned, is kind of like splitting hairs right now in terms of value. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so moving on to the Minnesota Vikings. I, th I feel like in my last few mock drafts, I've talked a little bit too much about theory and identity and all this stuff. And I'm just going to step back from that, and I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm going to be the the uh, the quote-unquote bad GM, and I'm just going to defer to you and say, I want you to go find me an offensive lineman. Uh, we we, we got to get this fixed, man. This is a very good – it's still a good defense, uh, despite losing quite a few pieces this upcoming year. I think Cousins – Although he isn't what we were hoping to get, I think he's better than, you know, he's, he's getting picked on a lot. He's a good quarterback. Thielen is a great wide receiver. Diggs is a great wide receiver. we got to get this offensive line fixed. Now, Riley Reef at left tackle is pretty solid. O'Neal we just got recently, so I don't know if I want to go right tackle, but if I were to say I need interior and I need it right now, who's going to be your guy? Chris Lindstrom sprinted up to the podium. I mean, he's, I wouldn't say as polished as you get as you get an interior lineman because we saw Quentin Nelson, how good he was last year. Chris Lindstrom isn't that same kind of finisher, that caliber of athlete, but I think he's pretty close. Um, I would say he's just the safest pick you have out of anyone in this class on the interior line. Steps in and should be an a, a immediate starter and I would say maybe even an immediate pro bowler for, for the Vikings. Wow. With the 18th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Chris Lindstrom, offensive guard out of Boston College. All right, so next up we got the Tennessee Titans. Um, really try not to get repetitive. I know as I do these mock drafts more often, you tend to say it a, lot of, a lot of the same things, but Titans fans do like the idea of getting an additional edge rusher in our 3-4 system opposite Landry and preferably a guy that's sort of a, a bigger guy to complement what Landry does well as far as three four outside linebackers is there anybody first of all anybody at all regardless of skill set that you like and then beyond that or is there is there sort of that that edge setter uh type of guy that can complement Chris Land or uh Chris Landry there's nobody that I would say can be a legitimate stand-up edge guy I would say Montez Sweat if you want to play him you know hand in the dirt and kind of maybe maybe a little bit you know run like some hybrid stuff and and I, I just don't see anyone as a pure outside linebacker that fits here um montez sweat like i said is is an option if you really want to push it cleveland furl maybe a little bit better suited for that um outside linebacker role but i, I wouldn't like him that role either i guess you could really 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 reach and deandre walker from george i know struggled a little bit this season and, and dealt with some injuries but he was getting first round buzz at times heading into the year I, I don't think he's anywhere close to worth, worth that value. I think he's more like a third rounder. I just don't think the value lines up with what we're looking for scheme-wise. 
All right, a, a couple other options here. Um, I know we just had a guard go off the board, which is pretty unfortunate. I, I think we could use a little help at, at guard if that was an option. Um, Klein was having a pretty bad year last year. Quentin Spain is possibly walking as a free agent. Is there still a guard that you like, or, or was Lindstrom kind of our one one and done opportunity there? I think Lindstrom was kind of our one and done opportunity as a pure guard, but I think Dalton Risner makes sense because he has the versatility to play tap or guard if you need him to. Obviously, he's not going to be playing tackle with with the guys we've got currently in, in Luan and in Conklin, but. I think you could plug in Dalton Risner immediately as a starter at guard and, and find success with him. So we'll, we'll throw him to the top of the list as of right now. Let me throw another scenario at you. When I look at the wide receivers, um, Corey Davis, is he took a pretty big step. Obviously, he's going to be the number one guy. I don't have a problem with that. Taewon uh, Taylor, eh, you know, he, he also took a step, but I don't know if he's super elite. So as I'm looking at it, the wide receiver group is okay but what if we could add a slot receiver to this mix and go from being an okay duo to a pretty scary trio? Because even if we can get a, a decent starting slot receiver, it's hard for any team as a defense to stop three starting caliber wide receivers. Is there anybody in the slot that you feel like maybe we could go for here? I mean, A.J. Brown, if you want to play him as a big slot, I don't know if that's the best move. I think Taewon Taylor, if you wanted to, you could play him in the slot. I think he might be better suited inside and then get a big guy on the outside. And this class is all big guys. Maybe Nikhil Harry and Kelvin Harmon make a little bit sense there. I think if you're looking for, like I said, you can move Taewon to the inside and then get Harry or Harmon, who is a better value pick and I think more upside than anyone you're getting in the slot. And I just think it's the best move to go with one of those guys, unless you want to go with maybe like Debo Samuel, but I think that's a little bit of a reach. Yeah. All right. I'll throw one more scenario just because I'm, I'm really struggling and I feel like we're not quite with anything we're in love with. Jarrell Casey is a very, very good interior guy. Outside of Jarrell Casey, I'm not super in love with anybody. What about interior defender? And I'm not going to put any restraints on you as far as what his skill set is. Is there an interior defender that you like? Dexter Lawrence, maybe. Um, you've got a question of how much you're going to get out of him pass rush wise, but I think the type of athlete he is for 340, 350 pounds, I think you've got to consider him. There's nobody that I would feel really comfortable taking a shot on here. I mean, I, I, I love Tillery from Notre Dame. I love O'Minahue from Texas, but there's just nobody that stands out as like, okay, he's worth this, this reach really is what it would be. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm personally not in love with any of them, so I'm, I'm going to defer to you as far as who you feel can be the, the guy that can step in and, and make an impact. Because, again, it's, you know, it, he, he's going to have to come in and compete because we don't have any garbage positions. It's not like if we get a guard or whoever, he's an automatic starter because we've got some competition there. Same with receiver, same with everything else. Whoever it is we pick, I want him to come in and I want him to start. Who's going to come in, compete, and win the job of the guys that we talked about? You know, I'm actually going to ask you a question first yeah. of how are you trying to build this team are you trying to do you trust Mariota and want to make this a passing team or you want to build this team on the ground with Derrick Henry I don't think I can trust Mariota uh, I'd like to be able to but I, I feel like trying to put it all on his shoulders is a bad idea um, if we can try to build around him like I said you know get some better wide receivers get the run game going focus a little bit on the defense and just make Mariota the the again staying away from the game manager talk but make him just let him operate within a scheme, not try to make him the, the, the you know, Aaron Rodgers drag the team along kind of guy. So, yeah, I'd like to build around him a little bit. Because I, I, I'm curious to see if – I just wanted to see if you had any interest in Drew Locke and replacing Mariota. I, I'm getting the vibe that you don't really have interest in that, that you want to keep Mariota. You just want to build the team just more so it's not all on his shoulders. I, I don't think I want to go that route. I mean, just, just because especially – you know, we, we can have that conversation. I mean, it's just, it's such a, it's such a risky thing. And beyond that, I mean, the, the odds of us of, of drafting somebody and then having this competition and, and Mariota winning, and then we're shaking Mariota's confidence and all this different, I just, I don't think I want to go there quite yet. I, I, I want to see what happens. If, if we can give him everything and he can't succeed, we'll, we'll kind of go other options, but I want to build it up a little bit and see what we can do with this team. Okay. Because I'm thinking Nikhil Harry makes a lot of sense here as, as a guy you can place across from um, from Corey Davis and, and have a very solid um, – I, I would say you could even make him into a wide receiver one, but obviously can't have two wide receiver ones on the same team. But him and, him and Davis could easily dominate uh, together, and I, I think that's the sexy pick. But I think Dalton Risner feels a little bit more of a need, and he has the versatility to play both guard spots, um, can play center if you need him to. 
I think Risner is, is the safer pick and the guy who's probably the better football player. All right, with the 19th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Dalton Risner, offensive guard, Kansas State. So, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're betting on Mariota. A lot of teams have bet on bad quarterbacks, and it hasn't worked out for them. But, uh, you know, this is going to be one less excuse, and we're just going to keep taking away excuses. And at the end of the day, if there's none left, we'll move on. But uh, as of right now, Dalton Risner, we're going to have come in and start at guard and help protect them, and we'll see what we can do. Next up, we've got the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Steelers fans, very, very unanimous in their voice. They want cornerback or linebacker. That's that's very, of, of every comment, those are the two things that come out the most. Now, personally, as the GM, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I feel like the Steelers' identity, getting back into the whole theory thing, I want to get back to be in this, you know, I, we, we got all this nonsense going on around what the Steelers are, and we're, we're kind of becoming this, I don't, I don't want to say laughing stock, but... Let's get back to being this hard-nosed, physical, smash-you-in-the-mouth kind of defense. Do you think there's a linebacker that can provide that, maybe Mac Wilson or whatever, um, that's a good value at 20? You want a hard-nosed linebacker and yeah. taking it back to a Steelers pick, I'm springing to the podium for Devin Bush. And I okay. know some people are going to say it's a little bit of a reach, but that's what Devin Bush is. I mean, Mac Wilson a little bit more of a, a, a physical specimen, so to speak, a good athlete, but Devin Bush hits you in the mouth type of linebacker, comes downhill, but also... Uh, respectable athlete can go sideline to sideline. I'm I'm rushing this pickup. If we're gonna try to make an identity for the Steelers and, and bring them back to their roots, yeah, Devin Bush is the pick all day. I, I want so badly to ask you about cornerback, but I, I just I can't do it. I, I I I feel like I want that pick and if you're telling me he's the guy that can give me that what I need and he's a, a decent value at twenty, I'm ready to turn it in if you're if you're okay with it's that. It's the Steelers pick to go get Devin Bush. Let's okay. do it. All right. With the 20th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Devin Bush, linebacker, Michigan. I, you know, it's it's going to get us back to where we need to be, man. We're going to get back to our identity. It's going to be a strong, mean, physical defense, and um, you know, we're, we're not going to let the Browns and anybody else take that division from us. We're getting back to what we used to do. So, moving on now with the 21st pick, the Seattle Seahawks, similar to the Vikings. Uh, we've we've talked a little bit about the identity. The the defense is eroding. You know, I'm I'm, I'm concerned about you know maybe our wide receivers possibly or all these different things. But let's let's be serious about something. Seattle Seahawks need offensive line, and this is a terrible draft because they're flying off the board. I don't know if we have too many options left, but tell me what our options are right now at offensive line in this draft. Really, nobody that I'm in love with at guard or even you know that you could. You can move Who do we have at center? Because I feel like center's center is Justin here. Britt. Justin Britt. He's probably one of the most reliable guys they have right there. So well, I would, he, he, out of that line, okay. I mean, he's, he's upgradable. But I would say if you're going to fix this Seahawks line, you need to just go for the most needy parts. Yeah. And, and I would say they love their they love their West Coast guys. So they're considering Caleb McGarry from Washington. Andre Dillard from Washington State. I think that's a little bit rich for McGarry. Maybe Dillard if you really want to reach and, and go for the pass protection side of things. Um, Yadni Kajus from West Virginia, a little bit more athletic than, uh, than most of these guys, but I, I'm not sure if I buy into him as a polished product yet. One that really, and I know since it's the Seahawks, I can be a little bit, I don't know the right word for it, of just a little bit... Um, Aggressive here would be would be what I'm going to use. Titus Howard from Alabama State is a huge reach, but it feels like that might be the Seahawks type of pick. Athletic lineman, you know, low level of competition, but um, dominated the guys he went up against and looked good throughout the entire draft circuit. That's a huge reach, though, but I, I think it's something we have to consider. So let, let me throw something else at you because I'm, I'm like I said, I came into the saying we got to get offensive line, but I'm I'm just not loving the value here. You mentioned the love for West Coast type stuff. Byron Murphy's still on the board at cornerback. If we did decide, let's kind of stick with our defense, and uh, you know our, our cornerbacks are eroding. He's he's obviously a better value than any offensive lineman we have. Do you think he can kind of? I, I I don't necessarily want to bring up Legion of Boom, but since we're talking identity, can he kind of come in and, and bring back a little bit of that physicality and and give give us a little bit of our identity back? You think? I was just better to bring that up. You mentioned identity, mentioned Legion of Boom, and just bringing a guy in who fits that and would really be the second coming of it. I don't think it's Byron Murphy. I think it's a another Washington defender. 
Taylor Rapp, I know okay. maybe not necessarily the sideline to sideline guy at safety, but very reliable, and he's just a booming hitter. He has a presence on the back end. You feel him if you're in offense. You know where he is at all times. I would say if you want to bring back the Legion of Boom and really build it back up, Taylor Rapp is your guy. You can make him your cam chancellor. So that's, that's tough. We, we've got the biggest need at off, offensive line, and there are names if we wanted to plug somebody in. Although we've swung and missed at several positions, I'm a little wary. You know, we we have we've struggled to kind of hit on some of these things. So I don't know if I want to go that route. So it kind of comes down to Taylor Rapp, or I mean, do, do you feel like because I, I just I, I don't want to get away from Byron Murphy too quickly. Do you feel like he is an, a, a much better value than Taylor Rapp, or do you feel like it's it's not that big of a deal? Taylor Rapp is is a fine value. I think Byron Murphy is a better value pick. But I think, and that's just based on what other teams are going to be looking at, Byron Murphy very well could have been gone a few picks ago um, had things fallen a little bit differently. I would say that you're getting more out of Taylor Rapp, and he does more for this defense. He's more of a cornerstone, so to speak, for the franchise than Byron Murphy is. All right. Well, I'm, 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 because that's more or less, I mean, value ultimately value what i'm looking for is value for our team i need somebody that's going to come and make an impact so if if that's going to be our guy with the 21st pick in the 2019 nfl draft the seattle seahawks select taylor rapp safety out of washington so you know obviously we're, we're losing one of the greatest football players uh, in the nfl at safety that's going to hurt our defense a little bit but if we can kind of kind of obviously nobody's going to be a replacement but if we can kind of get back that identity like we talked about i feel like that could be a good thing so uh taylor wrap there now moving on to the baltimore ravens i did have two comments in the facebook group from michael and from Derek. both of them mentioned joshua jacobs and both of them mentioned a wide receiver uh for michael it was hakeem butler for Derek, it was either dk metcalf or Nikhil harry who in your mind would be the top wide receiver on on your board as to, in terms of value who's the best guy available I would say Nikhil Harry. Um, I think Kelvin Harmon's certainly in play, but I would say Harry's a little bit better after the catch. Um, maybe not the same kind of dominating guy that Harmon is, but I think he can get up over guys, climb the ladder, go high point the football. He can be a legitimate wide receiver one, um, whereas Harmon might be a little bit more situa- situational, and I think Harry has a little bit of a higher floor. So I would say Nikhil Harry is the guy if we want to go wide receiver. Looking at Josh Jacobs, I know you've run through the the running backs pretty in depth, and a lot of people have him super super high. I mean, I'm talking top 15 ish. First of all, do you think that he is because the problem obviously with running back is he's got to be just heads and tails above everybody because we've seen so many running backs go in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round that have come in and, and been really solid contributors. Is he just heads and tails, instant starter, instant impact potential like? you know, Le'Veon Bell-ish category, like top 10-ish running back. Can he be that guy, or are we just kind of being silly looking at Joshua Jacobs here? There's two ways we can do this, and you, you can pick it for me of, I can look at him compared to the other guys, or I can look at him in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Which way do you want it? Hey, let's just, just do it in a vacuum. In a vacuum, absolutely. I think he can come in and be over a 1,000 yards rushing, effective in the receiving game. He's the complete package in terms of, burst power just tough running vision athleticism he can make you miss or he can run through you he is the complete package of running back so let me ask you this because i personally i'm and I'm, I'm deferring to them in the comments about you know running back and wide receiver i don't dislike our running backs to the same degree that i feel wide receiver is in need is is josh jacobs like heads and tails in terms of he's going to come in, he's going to be the guy, no question, and, and wide receiver is kind of iffy? Or do you feel like they're kind of similar in terms of if we get Nikhil Harry, he can come in and play? Who do, who do we have a receiver right now? Uh, Willie Sneed, John Brown, Crabtree, um, Jaleel Scott. We, we went and got him even though he didn't play. I think Harry comes in and starts right away, but I think Jacobs immediately does it too. I think Jacobs has more success early on. I think he's the better player than Nikhil Harry, but I think Harry may be a little bit more of a need. Yeah, and I'm I'm going to go that way. Um, I, I I'm not as involved in the Ravens as some of these guys are, so obviously they know something about running back. But when I see guys like Gus Edwards, um, that that were able to do some pretty good things for the team, um, I'm not going to talk super high about Ty Montgomery or Javoris Allen, Alex Collins, whatever. But we we've got some bodies that have done some stuff. So personally, for me, I feel like wide receiver, like you said, is the bigger need. So I'm going to go ahead and turn in the card. 
with the 22nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Nikhil Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. All right, moving on to the Houston Texans now, and it's it's going to be a similar situation with the Vikings and with the Seattle Seahawks. My first thing that I'm looking at here is offensive line. So, you know, we, we've got a solid defense. We, there's no question we have one of the best, if not the best, wide receivers. We have our quarterback. I need somebody along this offensive line that can help to get us over the edge. So I'm just curious who it is that's going to come in, that's going to start and be a, a presence, specifically somebody that can protect our quarterback. Can you run me through the the line we've got right now? Yeah. So I can identify where we're weak at. We have got at uh, the tackle position, Julian Davenport. Uh, obviously, he's a younger guy, but not very good. Martinez Rankin, another guy, very young, but not proving very much. So, so that becomes an instant problem. Do we want to go tackle and just give up, or should we wait and maybe look more interior? Along the interior, um, Nick, Bar- Nick Martin at center. Uh, not very good. Uh, Greg Manns, uh, Senio Clemente, Zach Fulton at guard. Again, nobody I feel super comfortable with uh, along the interior. I don't think we should go tackle just because those are some younger guys, and, and I think we need to give them a little bit of time. Davenport and uh, Rankin, while not great players, I mean, I think they're serviceable for the moment, and we've got some more serious concerns on the inside. Lindstrom being gone uh, kind of takes off most guards off the board. Um, you know, there's really no one that stands out as like, I wouldn't invest a first in someone like Michael Jordan from Ohio State or, or Drew Samia from Oklahoma. Um, I don't know if there's anyone that I would really like transitioning there. I, I guess you could argue for Caleb McGarry, maybe Michael, Michael Dieter from uh, Wisconsin because he has the positional versatility and he has experience playing all across the line. But I think... Go ahead. Who's who's our center again? I just want to make sure I got the Nick Martin. He's he's, Nick. he's uh, uh, going into his third year, so still relatively young. But um, yeah, we're not getting anything from him either. I would say you can go up and, and with Garrett Bradbury from North Carolina State, get an instant Pro Bowl level guy, and maybe it's not necessarily a, a pick that everyone's going to fall in love with, a pick that everyone's going to be excited about. But I think it gives us an immediate boost on that offensive line fortifies that interior give me garrett bradbury from north carolina state unless you want to investigate other positions let me let me throw one more at you because something just dawned on me that there's a, a prospect that's really talented that's still out there that could also help not offensive line but blocking we don't have really any good tight ends jordan atkins ryan griffin jordan thomas we're not getting anything as far as as blocking we're not getting anything as far as receiving maybe you could say jordan thomas isn't the worst receiver i don't i don't really care we really really need offensive line but would you say a guy like hawkinson who can block as well as be a receiver would be sort of the run to the the podium kind of a pick here or are you still thinking these offensive linemen can come in and and be really good values for us I think Hawkinson, in terms of pure talent, you could say he's better than Bradbury, but in terms of what you're going to be getting, value snap to snap, and then we already invested in Aikens and Thomas, and and correct me if I'm wrong, it was a third in Aikens and a a sixth in Thomas? Am I wrong on that? Like a fourth or a sixth, something along those lines? Yeah, something along those lines. And and already investing a day two pick in Aikens, and, and I'm not a big fan of him, but I feel like we've kind of, you know, We've made our bed, let's land yeah, it, right. and let's go get Bradbury and just get a, a pro bowler at center. Sure. With the 23rd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Garrett Bradbury, offensive center, NC State. All right, Oakland Raiders are back up. Um, they went and got Devin White, linebacker out of LSU, maybe a little bit earlier than some people would like, but a very, very solid tone setter in the middle of the defense. So now with the Oakland Raiders, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it the same way. I, I, I want to just reassess our board, and I really just want the better players. I, 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 we've got needs everywhere. I, you know, you kind of called my bluff with quarterback a little bit, so let's shy away from that. But building outside and around that, who are some of the guys that you're looking at on the board that are a good value that are sitting here? Because as I'm looking at it, we've got quite a few that have kind of fallen. Well, first, I just want to throw it back to quarterback. I know you kind yeah. of you said – Derek Carr is our guy, but Drew Locke is available right now. Sure. We didn't expect him to fall this far, and he's available. So okay. I think Raiders fans are going to be really curious of, like, is there interest here at 24 going after Drew Locke? Do, do you think that's that's something we should – I feel like it's a conversation we should have at least with this kind of value for Locke. Well, l- let me just throw it back. at 
we've got a pick at 27, and Philadelphia mm-hmm. and Indianapolis are 25 and 26. They're not taking Drew Locke, I would assume. Let's reassess that at pick 27. Is that okay. fair? <laughs> That's fair. All right. Um, I'm thinking, I know receiver's a big question mark for us, so Kelvin Harmon stands out to me in that regard. Maybe a little bit too early for A.J. Brown or Debo Samuel, but I think those guys have to be in consideration. Tight end, like you said, you best player available. I mean, no offense. Um, if you're strictly going for a pass catcher and then T.J. Hawkinson, the better overall player than Noah Fant. But, there, but you you got to give me like a little bit of like what what we're looking yeah. at positionally. Well, let me let me ask you let me let me do it this way because I've I've got my own board here. So let me just throw a couple names at you and you can tell me okay. if you think it's right that they're falling or if maybe we can look at them. First of all, Cleveland Farrell. Do you feel like he could be an option here at 24? An option, but I think the value is. His value is more in like pick thirty ish. Really? Okay. All right. That that is a plummet. <laughs> but I, I will I will add though about um, Cleveland Farrell is there's not many guys left. It's really just him and Montez Sweat that are left here in these right. first round guys at edge rusher. Right. So if we want to make that move, we got to do it before someone else pounces. The only I mean the, the, there's other good values. Obviously we can talk Byron Murphy again. DeAndre Baker is another cornerback. I'm guessing if we're going to go corner, it's going to be Byron Murphy. Yeah. Um, I don't know where you feel about Deontay Thompson. I know he's fallen quite a bit, but we're we're kind of getting to the back of the first. Uh, you mentioned Hawkinson. We talked about Fant. Joshua Jacobs, we talked about being a potential very, very good running back here. So so these are the guys, and, and obviously we could talk about Jeffrey Simmons. I don't think he should go this early, but if, we could have that conversation if we wanted to. Jeffrey Simmons, obviously, as far as talent goes in a vacuum, clearly the best player available so those are some of the names that i'm kind of looking at that are still available that that maybe are really good talents and i don't really see as far as need that there's any of these guys that i'm looking at saying i don't think we should touch them we got that that kind of satisfied so you know if we're going to go defense we could go edge rusher if we're going to go cornerback we could absolutely use that safety we could do that tight end we could do that it's wide open here so we've got arden key as one of our edge rushers who's our other guy there um We've got uh, Frosty Rucker, we've got Kyle Wilbur, Coney Ely, Shelly Calhoun, James Kowser, and Jacques Smith. I think Cleveland Farrell has to be in the mix here. Okay. I would say he's he's a better option over Montez Sweat um, if we're going to go edge here. Safety, I know we've kind of already invested in Carl Joseph, and, and we've kind of put our capital heavily in, in the safety. But I would say give Carl Joseph some more time because... Right. He, he has the potential. He just hasn't maximized it. Maybe it's a coaching thing or something like that, but I would say give him a little bit more time. Byron Murphy, just on value alone, makes a lot of sense here. Yeah. How are we looking at corner right now? Um, well, the one guy that Raiders fans, I, I mentioned corner last time, they got a little upset talking about Gary and Conley. There is some talent there. I, I think maybe they're a little overstating how good he is. I think somebody went out of their way to say elite or something to that effect, which is nonsense. But even, even if we concede that he's uh, a decent potential cornerback uh, Leon Hall, Bene Ben Wickery, Rashawn Melvin, Daryl Worley, uh, Nick Nelson. I mean, I there's there's a lot of bodies and a lot of names, but I don't know anybody here necessarily that I'm looking at saying never mind, we don't need cornerback. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of guys there that are named guys, but not necess- I mean, I think Byron Murphy can come in and be our number 2 over all those guys. Yeah. Um, and you could argue one over, I, I mean, probably Gary. would, yeah, but we don't we don't have to go there if, if Raiders fans don't want to go there. <laughs> um, I feel like receiver again. I, I feel like that's a huge need. I mean, who who are they have a receiver right now? They got Jordy Nelson, right? And that's about it. Yeah, yeah, we got Jordy Nelson, um, Marcel Aitman, Seth Roberts. Those are kind of the big three. Uh, LaFell is in the mix. Martavis Bryant, I think, is still sitting there. That's about it. Again, it feels like the same thing with the corners. Of there's names, names but there's right. no. Right. It's just names. Right. Um, I guess I would say wide receiver stands out to me as the biggest position of need and maybe not necessarily the greatest value. But if I had to break it down to like a couple, man, it's there's like you've said before with with the Raiders, there's so many positions that are huge needs. And they, I, it's kind of just like pick your poison. If you want to go after an address, you're like Farrell. You want to go after Byron Murphy. I mean, I'm going to kind of throw it to you if we're talking value here are you taking Farrell or Murphy I mean based on where I've got him sitting Farrell would be Farrell would be the the better option I I it seems like you don't necessarily agree so that's going to be kind of to your deferral um 
because I'm I'm comfortable with either. Uh, but I but I also acknowledge pass rusher. If if and again we we got to discuss how what is his upside? What can he provide to us? Because if you, if you're telling me Cleveland Farrell can be a a very good presence off the edge, then that's it's kind of a it answers itself. That there's no question he's going to be the guy. Arden Key for whatever we think he can be, he's not providing us very much. So if, if, if he can be the guy, if he can be our edge rusher, there's no question. I, I want to turn in the card for him. If not, then let's just play it safe and let's get a, a potential lockdown cornerback in Byron Murphy. Well, let's look at, I know we've got a pick here in a couple. We, we've got to deal with the Colts and the Eagles, like you mentioned. Yep. I feel like we got to play this because we can go in, in each of these picks, we can go Furl and Murphy. We just got to make sure whoever's ahead of us doesn't take them. Yeah. So looking at the Eagles and the Colts, are you thinking, who do you think comes off the board first, Murphy or who could you live without between these two? Because I feel like I feel like I could live without yeah. Farrell, you know, who's more likely to go first? The, the, there, there would be a question of Cleveland Farrell going at 26 to the Colts would be my one concern. Uh, they, they've talked about, you know, defensive line in general, defensive tackle, maybe a bigger need, but but. You know, if they like him a lot, it seems like a pretty good fit for me that uh, Cleveland Farrell to the Colts. So how about we go and get Farrell right now and hope we can get Murphy at pick 27. If if he's not there, we can kind of reassess, maybe consider guys like DeAndre Baker, Imani Orwarie. But let's go ahead and just go get Farrell. And, because I don't I don't feel comfortable with Montez Sweat if we got to pick yeah. him at 27. Yeah. You cool with that for all at 24? Sounds good. With the 24th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Cleveland Furl, edge rusher, Clemson. So moving on now to the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll see uh, how far we get with, with uh, Byron Murphy. But Eagles fans largely seem to like the idea of getting a wide receiver. I had talked about uh, maybe somebody in the slot before, and they didn't like that. They specifically seem to want, several people in the comment section said, not only do we want outside, we need speed. So obviously there's a name that comes to my mind, but I, I want to kind of pick your brain. If we need a speed guy off the edge, who are our options? We've got Hollywood Brown as a pure speed guy, and that's about it. Okay. <laughs> His class is full of big boys, so if we're looking for pure speed, it's too early for Andy Isabella. <laughs> There's really nobody else. I mean, Paris Campbell's a huge reach. Um, yeah, I think if we're looking at it as a pure speed guy, we're talking Hollywood Brown. The other question I had that some people brought up was running back. So I, I just want to, if we look at Hollywood Brown, I know the fact that he's not going to be able to, to run a lot of these drills at the, the, the combine, which is supposed to hurt his stock. The injury itself is going to hurt his stock. Is that concern you enough that maybe we defer and, and start to look at a guy like Josh Jacobs? Or if, or if we're if I'm telling you Hollywood Brown, you know the 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 speed guy on the outside is going to really make a big difference. Are you comfortable with him here at 25? I feel like, and it's and I don't want to be too much of that player comparison guy, but I feel like, you know, I just watched Hollywood Brown. He's fresh in my mind, and I'm thinking John Ross a little bit. I see he, he's kind of what we wanted John Ross to be, and I see the injury concerns, and it feels I would say like Groundhog Day because they're two separate guys, but I'm getting a little bit of that vibe. Okay, and. Between him it, this early and then Josh Jacobs, who I think is, is a – I know I buzzed about him earlier, but just a almost a guarantee is like a, a quality, maybe pro, pro Bowl caliber back, does it all, the complete package. I feel like it's safer to go Josh Jacobs. Okay. Yeah, that's that, – that, and it's a tough spot with our running backs. I, I don't know that I really like anybody necessarily. I mean, I, I like a lot of our guys. I don't know if we have that guy, that Josh Jacobs guy. We got Jay Ajayi. He flashed, but eh. You got, uh, you know, Donnell Pumphrey, Corey Clement. They've all had their moments, but I don't know if we have that guy. So it really comes down to are we comfortable with this sort of rotation at back, and then we go wide receiver. But then on the other hand, you know, you look at wide receiver – we could use a little help, but we still got Alshon Jeffrey. We still got Al Aguilar. We we still got some some people over there. I'm I'm really I'm really torn here. <laughs> I I want to give the people what they want in Hollywood Brown. I feel like like you said though, Josh Jacobs is is the better player. I mean, try to help me tip the scales here a little bit. You know, J Josh Jacobs upside. Who who are we looking at? Is it, just just give me a comp. Give me somebody. A comp for Josh yeah. Jacobs upside. Alvin Kamara times two. <laughs> that, that's the high. That's okay. That's what, what well, you're, if he plays out of his mind, I think he he's capable of reaching that ceiling. I think he's a better runner than Kamara is, 
but it brings that same kind of like you know smash you in the mouth as soon as he gets the ball just mean guy but can make you miss too i mean he's the complete package whereas brown my my thing with brown is if it weren't for the if he were completely healthy let's see he goes out there and runs a, a four two seven yeah. and he shows his speed off and and does all the testing then we're talking about it a lot more seriously but i think with the injury concerns, we don't know how well he's going to come back. He's built on the speed, and if he doesn't, we saw how much he struggled when he was hurt. Um, late in the Texas game, he got hurt and, and really didn't do much. Alabama game, he was hurt and was a non-factor. He got pulled because of the injury. Had drops all over the place. I think Josh Jacobs. I mean, he's maybe not the home run threat or anything like that. Like Mark Marquise Brown can be a game breaker, but I think Josh Jacobs is just a lot safer and also the I wouldn't want to say the value is better but it feels like it almost is because you know what you're getting with Jacobs Brown you're not 100% sure what you're getting let me ask you one more thing because I'm still really torn on it if, if you had to put a percentage on it the idea that that Hollywood Brown is going to come in and he's going to be that guy he's going to be our you know, whatever our wildest dreams are he's going to come in he's going to be very very good the the, 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 the Deshaun Jackson for our team are we anywhere near even 50% in your mind that he's going to come in, he's just going to be that guy? I'm thinking 35. Yeah, 35. I don't like that number. And then, and then Josh Jacobs coming in and being a... Josh Jacobs is like a 90% to me. All right. I, I just, I'm so I, comfortable with that. I really wanted to take Hollywood Brown there, but I, I just, everything we're talking about, I, I just, if you're good with it, Josh Jacobs... Yeah, I, 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 I want to take Hollywood Brown because the upside is insane. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's going to run a, I mean, he would run a 4.27 if he did test, but you just, he, he's also, one thing that concerns me is he has some drops issues and just kind of has been inconsistent at times. Um, the Alabama game, like I said, he was injured, but it was it was horrendous. I would say Jacobs is just a surefire, surefire guy, um, whereas Hollywood, you're, for a first-round pick, you're betting a lot there. Yeah. All right, with the 25th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Josh Jacobs, running back, Alabama. All right, let's move on to Indianapolis now. We lost our prospect at uh, defensive end. No, I shouldn't say loss. We've, we've got other guys, but that's not an option for us anymore. I know in the – I mentioned defensive tackle, defensive end. Uh, Drayton in the Facebook group specifically said Wilkins, who is gone, but just to give you an idea, he said that's, that's a must. Kevin Harrell in the comments section said Wilkins or Sweat. It's it, regardless defensive line or bust is what he had to say. Um, to open it up a little bit, Michael Eggleston said edge or secondary. But let's start with the defensive line, and if we don't like anybody, let's possibly look at the idea of, of secondary. Okay, look at the defensive line. Dexter Lawrence stands out to me, but he's, again, he's not a pocket pusher or a guy who's going to you know light up with the, with the sack totals. There's a lot of guys who are good passers, but not – any that I think are, you know, maybe I wouldn't say of reach here, but they're just they're not the same kind of surefire pick that like a Christian Wilkins is. Jerry Tillery, Charles Omenihu, I already mentioned those guys. I think Gerald Willis from Miami, he had some really good flashes early on in the year. Um, those are the guys I'm looking at at, at defensive tackle right now and on the interior. It's just um, Tillery, Omenihu, Willis, and maybe Dexter Lawrence. And then I know uh, Montez Sweat got brought up. I think he could certainly be in play there. He's the best edge guy left on the board. He's the only one at edge I would feel comfortable taking round one. All right. And, you know, I had mentioned corner, but I, I as I'm looking at the team, I don't know that I super agree, and I, I don't really want to go that route. If 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 we're saying that it's, it's sort of that defensive line or bust, and especially since we're talking about the Colts, who are a team that is just a little bit away. So I don't, I don't want to add to our cornerbacks if we if we just need a solid defensive prospect let me ask you about montez sweat because ideally i'd like to come off the edge we're running a 4-3 system do you i mean if it's dire can he come in and, and be a solid contributor what would you say his upside is my question is what are you looking for are you looking for a sack or are you looking for being a good both pass rush and in run defense guy i mean are we talking about Someone we need to do both, or are we talking about someone we want to get after the quarterback? Because... Well, I mean, you know, obviously sacks are the most important thing, but I'm, I'm fine with, with being well-rounded. Um, we, we don't have anyone that can rush the passer, so there has to be at least some aspect to that. I'm not going to say he's got to be a 10-sack guy. He's got to have some ability to get after the passer. But, um, I mean, you know, run defense is also an issue. Outside of Jabal Sheard, 
who can't rush the passer but is a good run or decent run defender. We don't have anyone that can do either. So if, if you're giving me balance, I'll take it. But there has to be some thought in your mind that he's going to get some sacks. Give me, give me six, give me seven, something like that. I'm not sure I can give you six or seven. Ah, That's worrying me because <laughs> I'm looking. The only other guy that stands out here that I and I know I said there's really no other edge guys that I'm comfortable with. I'll throw out one: Chase Winovich from uh, from Michigan. I think he he. He's not the same type of athlete that Sweat is. He's not going to test the same way. He's not as big. I think he's a lot more technically sound. I think his hand usage is a lot more refined. I think he's going to come in and be better earlier on. I think Sweat, it's a little bit more of a projection. So I would say if we're going for, you know, we need a run defender, and I think Winovich is probably a better run defender too than Sweat. I think he's a better player right now than Sweat is. I think Winovich would have to be the pick there. We're forcing the pick to edge. And then... So we are willing to, to swing for the fences, so I'm, I'm not going to nix that. As far as pass rush upside, can this guy to be developed into somebody that can, can get around the edge? I don't think he can bend um, with okay. sweat. I, I think he has some flashes of his hand usage. I mean, his hands are active, and, and he has some occasional power. His push-pull is really nice. But I just don't see him ever being a legitimate bendy guy who can, who can threaten to, to turn the corner on people. Is that, and Is that Chase Winovich you're talking about? I'm, I'm talking about Sweat right oh, now. Oh, yeah, Chase Winovich, I mean, is he, is he, can he be that guy? Uh, I think his hand usage is a lot better. I trust him to win with his counters and, and find ways to get to the quarterback earlier on. I don't think either is a good athlete. I don't think either is going to wow you, but I think um, just looking right now, Winovich is more polished. So let, let's turn it back now to defensive tackle. I know you said there's nobody that's super great at it, but if, if we're talking about guys off the edge that are just kind of – very vanilla and aren't going to provide too much. Is there somebody we can get on defensive line that is primarily dominant uh, along the defensive line, but also at least, I mean, anything whatsoever as far as, you know, give me three. Can I get three? Can I get three from Jerry Tillery or any of these guys? Or are we just strictly saying it's run defense? I want to throw out one more name before we conclude this, but I'll talk about Tillery first. I think Tillery can give you six, seven sacks easy. Oh. I think he. I mean, I think he's a great pass rusher. Okay. Um, many of you, he's he's not the same type of polish as a pass rusher as Tillery is, um, but I think he has a little more versatility. You can move him around a little bit more. Or as Tillery, you're strictly playing on the inside. Um, a minute you can maybe try, maybe move him out to defensive end. Um, very moldable frame. Willis, again, it's a, it's a reach here, but I think maybe not the same type of production that Tillery has, and not as reliable in run defense. But I think he's we're talking about and, and one guy I'm going to throw out here is and I, I this is a again kind of like the Titus Howard thing for Seattle this is way off the wall Kalen Saunders from Western Illinois a lot of, I know a lot of people love his athleticism he's been moved around by that Western Illinois team quite a bit he even rushed off the edge standing I mean, he's done it all I think the testing is going to be huge whether or not you can you can trust him especially this early but let's say he goes out there at 320 pounds and runs a, a 4-8 then people are going to start talking about him maybe sneaking into this slot so um, I think he's certainly worth discussing because he has some pass rush upside as well. So here's where my head's at. You, you tell me if, if you've got some hesitation here. If you're telling me Montez Sweat maybe can't even get me to six, but Jerry Tillery, who is a defensive tackle, can probably get me about as many sacks as Montez Sweat can, and interior is a need, I, I, I feel like that's sort of a slam dunk in my mind. Is, is there somebody else that's nagging at you that we, you really want to bang the table for? Not really. I, I like Tillery here quite a bit. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't done much on as, as by way of scouting, but I will say Jerry Tillery, of all the guys that I went through, he was somebody I wasn't expecting to like that really, really I did like. And, and, and it was sort of that, that pass rush ability, just his ability to use his hands and kind of get past people. So I really like Jerry Tillery. I, I agree that uh, this would be a good pick. So with the 26th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Jerry Tillery, defensive tackle, Notre Dame. The plan for Oakland at 27, let's take Cleveland and hope that Byron Murphy is available. Byron Murphy is available, but I also said at 27 we would revisit the idea of maybe talking about Drew Locke. So, let's talk about those two. Give me your sales, give me your elevator pitch on these two guys. Elevator pitch on Drew Locke, you know, stylistically he's actually very similar to Carr, but doesn't have the same bad habits that Carr has picked up over the years in the NFL. Um, you know, you can kind of build him into the offense in a very similar way, and, and 
not have much change to the scheme, but hopefully um, get better decision making and more production. Um, I think if you wanted to sit him a year and, and let him learn, I think learning from a guy who shares a similar skill set skill set would be beneficial. Um, and also, I know we kind of wanted to focus just on quarterback and then Byron Murphy, but um, I know we had some concerns about wide receiver. We talked about Mar- uh, Hollywood Brown. I know you liked him a little bit earlier. Thought he was a potential like game breaking guy. Um, and then Kelvin Harmon's available as well as, as a big target. I feel like we got. I know we settled on Byron Murphy, but I feel like we got to explore the options a little bit here. Sure. Yeah, and I, I, I feel like you did a too good of a job on those elevator pitches because now I'm, I'm looking at uh, Drew Locke <laughs> and I'm thinking it, it's beneficial that we have three picks because we, we've already done two things. It's not like we have one pick and we're going Drew Locke and it's like, oh, look what they're doing. No, no, we've invested a lot of stuff. And as the GM, I can I can throw out some line about how he was just, you know, this is a super great value, which is why we took him. It's nothing against our current quarterback. And like you said, if he's the kind of guy that you can sit for a while, there's no question we can just – talk about how Derek Carr is going to be our quarterback. We'll sit him on the bench. There'll be no conflict whatsoever, <coughs> and we'll try to groom Drew Locke into being our guy. So I, I don't hate that pick. Byron Murphy, I think we've been talking about in terms of value, but also, yeah, wide receiver might be the biggest need. So I'm going to kind of throw it <coughs> I'm going to throw it to you. Well, I would just say that, I mean, Drew Locke, like you mentioned, the value is, is great, but it's just a matter of, I mean, he, he fits – like I mentioned, exactly what you what you're doing with Derek Carr in terms of um, the skill set and the traits. If we make the move and go after Drew Locke, let's say Derek Carr is you know is ready to go and just like you know ends up turning around his career and and really just gets to the next level. Well, we already had our other two first round picks we invested. We can, we can live with that. We can trade out Drew Locke and and hopefully get somebody else um, or get some value back for that pick. Let's say. Derek Carr is not the guy. We have a year or two to build up Drew Locke and really let him develop. And then by the time Derek Carr is, you know, out going out the door, we have a legitimate franchise quarterback in Drew Locke. It all pans out. But if we decide not to, if we decide we're riding with Derek Carr, we head into next year with Derek Carr. We don't know who our franchise guy is going to be after that. If Carr struggles, it's a huge bet. And I think Locke at least gives us like an insurance policy. Um, he gives us maneuverability. Yeah. Going to like a Byron Murphy, it's the better immediate pick. I think Kelvin Harmon contributes more immediately, but I just think with Drew Locke, it's a great in- it's a great insurance policy on on Derek Carr and just where we're going in the next few years. If you think Derek Carr is going to just completely struggle and we're going to go three and thirteen next year no matter what we do, and we're going to be in the prime position to take. Uh, Tua or Justin Herbert or maybe you love Jake Fromm, then I can I can see the reasoning. But I think just on just on the basis of we we have the maneuverability if we take Locke to to trade him or you know trust Carr for another year or two, just we have a lot more we can work with in that regard. Um, so then in terms of just value, because I always like to come back to that, looking at wide receiver, looking at Byron Murphy, even you know just throw in a Hawkinson, whatever, I don't care. Is there somebody that's just going to – are we going to get killed because this, this value should have gone and it's a need? Or do you think Drew Locke is, is a really good value here at, at, at 27 and we shouldn't really worry about it? I feel like both Locke and Murphy are massive values. But with Locke, I think we have – and this is a – I mean, one, one thing I'd consider here is Locke's already he's, – he's not off the board. So the fact that teams aren't valuing him as a first-rounder – or at least not so far, makes it a little bit interesting to me because if we, let's say we end up, Carr turns it around, we have Drew Locke, we invested the first in him, and we want to move him. Our team is going to give up a first for Drew Locke, who's been sitting on our bench for two years, or a year, whatever it is. Our team's going to, what are they going to give up for Drew Locke if we make this move and we decide to stick with Carr? Because, I, like you said, we're kind of on the fence with Carr. We're not 100% sure yet. So... I feel like the the again it kind of it's a two way street. We have the the ability to move him, but also we kind of hope he is that franchise guy, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm I'm just I'm really torn on that. I I know I told you <clears throat> whoever and and wherever. Um, I I I guess my biggest struggle is just the fact that because I'm on the fence with Carr, and because we have so many other needs. And because there's so many other values, I know I said I was going to give it a fair shake. I think I'm going to take Drew Locke off the board. I think I'm just going to take him off. Should we go wide receiver as far as bigger need, 
or do you think we should go Byron Murphy in terms of value? In terms of value, Byron Murphy. And I want to throw out one more thing with sure. the lock before I completely close right. out. <laughs> is, like I said, they, he's very stylistically similar to Derek Carr. So it's like the the peak for Drew Locke is Derek Carr when Derek Carr was doing really good. So oh, right. it's, it makes it kind of like, you know, right. you're, you're just hoping you, you claim that magic that Derek Carr had, but with a different guy who's similar to Derek Carr. Yeah. Um, so I'm fine with moving on from that. I just okay. wanted, I really yeah, yeah, wanted yeah. the discussion and the value that he is at 27 is, yeah. is worth discussing. And it, um, and yeah. Wide receiver, Kelvin Harmon, I think, while good, is not the same type of value that you're getting with Byron Murphy. I know we kind of settled on Byron Murphy earlier. Um, yeah, I'm feeling Byron Murphy if, if you're down with it. Yeah, and, and and to kind of close the chapter on Drew Locke also, we're getting Derek Carr, and he's also inheriting all the problems with Derek Carr. So we're not doing him any favors of being, like, mm-hmm. top tier at Derek Carr. We want you to be the best version of Derek Carr, but also you don't have any weapons to throw to. So best of luck to you. But anyways, with the 27th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Byron Murphy, cornerback, Washington. All right. I, uh, I I created a lot of problems when I said that we can take whoever. I should <laughs> I should have been more specific, but I feel good with that pick. Next up, we've got the Los Angeles Chargers. We talked about it last time. They're they're close to having a, a pretty good team. They've they've got a lot of weapons. I, I like their quarterback. I like their wide receivers. I like a lot of their defenders. But I feel like if we were to focus on the trenches in general, which is offensive line, defensive line, that's kind of where I want to focus. Uh, with Feeney, he's another guy that I, I mentioned, you know, these early round guards that have gone, I just, I'm not seeing anything from him. He's not doing anything for me. Um, Pouncey is over the hill. Schofield at right guard is not good. Our right tackle spot is just a mess. I don't even know who we're going to put over there. So we got to look at that. On the defensive side, we're not only lacking top tier talent, but Phelan, Mebane, Legit, Square, they're all free agents this year. And obviously we can re-sign some, but our salary cap isn't super great, so we're missing talent and we're going to lose a lot of bodies. So between guard, center, right tackle, 4-3 defensive tackle, what do you think are our best options? Caleb McGarry has to be in play because I think he can play both right tackle and probably right guard, but I don't think the value is there for him. I think he's more of a a mid-round two, late-round two type of guy at best. Andre Dillard, more of a traditional left tackle, not a power guy, so you're not going to move him into guard. He's strictly outside. Who do we have at left tackle? Um, our left tackle is going to be um, Russell Okung is who it is. Okay. Yeah, and he's getting up there, but I feel like he's still... He's holding it steady. Yeah, he's still yeah, doing it. He's, he's still doing it pretty decent. So yeah. I'm going to say if we're considering... I mean, Michael Dieter, I mentioned earlier out of Wisconsin, he's an option here if, if you really want to make a move for a guy who's versatile, but I don't know if he has the round one value. Yannick could use maybe a little bit better at right tackle than, than Dillard would be, but I don't know if I'm comfortable with that either. On the offensive line, I'm just I'm not really feeling anybody. Yeah. Um, I feel like defensive line, we have more options. Just going through to the defensive line, looking at some of these guys. With Tiller off the board, and we've got a Minihue still who's versatile. Dexter Lawrence can replace Brandon Meebane if we want to go that route of just having a, a big nose tackle type guy. I feel like Lawrence would be an intriguing option there. Sure. And then... Uh... One other name I want to throw out, I know, and this is true of every team, it's nice to get a little interior pass rush, but as we're getting later into the first round, do you think a guy like Draymond maybe is, is a decent value here? I feel like with Draymond, you've got to have someone who's you know guaranteed to anchor it down, and you've got to use him almost as a rotational guy okay. because he's he gets washed in run defense. So I don't trust him at all there, and I think for a guy who just gets destroyed in run defense so often, I think it's risky to invest a first-round pick. Fair Jeff, Jeff Simmons, I will throw out here. Do you do you consider him at all? I know the ACL and the off field are, are both concerning, but is he on your board at all here? I'm a huge fan of his, but I look at the Chargers and I'm saying I'm I'm a little bit too much in win now mode with with the quarterback kind of coming toward the end. A lot of the guys that we have, I, I want to make a push this year. He's not going to do anything for us this year. I, I just don't really personally like that for the Chargers in particular, as much as I would bang the drum for him for just about any other team. It seems like it's too much of a need with yeah. all those guys potentially leaving and, and needing to get someone who can contribute right away. And I feel like just discussing if and if we're going to look at defensive line, like it's we need a guy who can contribute right away. Um, I would say Aminihu and Aminihu and Dexter Lawrence are my two guys who I think can contribute right away. I think Lawrence is the safer pick. 
Um, you're not asking him to do as much, but he's very good at what he does and just holding his ground and as a big nose tackle. A mini Hugh, maybe a little bit more time he needs to take to, to really develop his game and, and transition to the pro level. I'm not loving any of these guys. Are, are you thinking anyone's possibility as, as the best player available? I don't want to get too deep into the Drew Locke talk either again, but we do need to potentially consider a successor for Phil sure. Rivers. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't think we can put too much stock in Geno Smith and Cardale Jones, so that's definitely an option. Maybe, uh, see, no, we can't do tight end. We got that figured out. Um, corners we got pretty well. Derwin, obviously, we just got at safety. Maybe we could talk linebacker as, as another possibility. So, you know, another quarterback is a possibility. Maybe linebacker, but, um, you know, that that's, that's only going to be if you really don't like these things. And, and let me just throw something else out because I, I was kind of getting comfortable with Dexter. Pass rush probably isn't as big of an issue just because we have such good guys on the edge with Bosa and everything else. So if we can just get a big monster, you know, run stuffing type guy, if there's a team that I'm okay with that for, it's going to be a team like the Chargers who's got that edge presence as it is. So I'll, I'll throw that out there, but then I'll, I'll throw it back to you as far as if you want to talk quarterback or possibly linebacker. Who are we rocking at linebacker right now? Uh, we got Denzel Perryman. We've got, I'm trying to think who could possibly step up. I mean, Jatavis Brown, Kyle Emanuel, Nick, I don't even, Zubnar. I don't even know who that is. Pretty much as far as, far as the, the guys that I know of that can do something, it's, it's Denzel Perryman. Um, it, from what I remember, at least in terms of college, he was more of a run stuffer than anything, although I don't know if he's doing anything right now. So, yeah, I, I, I don't super love anybody that we have. If we're in win-now mode, I don't think Mac Wilson is the guy, even though he's a high upside guy at linebacker. I just don't think in win-now mode, I don't think it's the right move. Um, I, I like where you're going with Dexter Lawrence. I really like the idea of just getting a guy who can hold it down in the middle of our defense and, and let the edge rusher guys uh, do their job and, and Bosa and, um, and Ingram. So I would say I'm feeling pretty comfortable with Dexter Lawrence. Yeah, I, I am too. I think it's a great fit. I think it's a good – he can come in today and he can help us to try to get us over the edge. So with the 28th pick in the 2019 NFL draft, the L.A. Chargers select Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. All right, let's move on to Kansas City now. Another team, obviously, as we get toward the end, we're talking about a lot of teams like this, but Kansas City Chiefs very, very close. We're getting into that win-now uh, kind of territory. There were a few thoughts in the comment section. Um, in the in the Facebook group in particular, nobody failed to mention corner. That that was something that stuck out as far as what everybody seemed to to think. We did lose Byron Murphy. Give me a, a name or two. And I, I know in, the, in in the last draft we did, there were some other names that you said usually aren't uh, talked about in the first round, but guys you really like. So obviously the guys that you know are first round talents, but maybe some other guys that could potentially be in the first round conversation at cornerback. Well, DeAndre Baker is certainly the, the biggest name that's going to be talked about here. Um, Trayvon Mullen, I know, has his fans, even though he's not the complete package. Um, Lonnie Johnson has some fans, but I know a lot of people are very sour on him and don't believe he's even worth a, a day two pick. Amani Oruwari, I think it's kind of Oruwari and Baker in, in a category of their own below Murphy and, and Greedy. Um, I think he certainly has to be in consideration here. Probably the best athlete still available. Maybe Rocky Sin from Temple if you really want to get risky, but um, I would say Orwari is probably our Orwari or Baker are probably our best bets at corner here if we're gonna go corner. I wanna throw this out that safety, correct me if I'm wrong, this is another huge need. So we gotta talk about safety too. Sure. So I'll, I'll I'll open it up in a little bit here. Safety as well as linebacker, I think, are something that we could talk about. But let me let me hone in a little bit more. Uh, the Chiefs did go out and hire Steve Spagnolo as their defensive coordinator. And as best as I can tell, as far as his scheme, I tried to look into big zone blitz guy. So if we're going to look for a corner, I'm not necessarily looking for the big long press guy. Who in your mind is is maybe sort of a, a good zone cornerback at this point? If I'm looking at a zone guy. That's tough because. Greedy would be probably my guy here just because of how big he is and you know how well he can defend the sideline. I don't know if there's any corner that I love purely for zone here. Okay. Um, Baker, I feel like, is a little bit more of a man guy. I guess Lonnie Johnson, but I don't trust him at all um, overall. I, I would say out of the guys that I'm looking at here that are available, I would say probably Oruwari is the best bet as, as his own corner. Maybe Jawan Williams if you want to make 
you know, I think he's more in the day two conversation, but Juwan Williams, he makes sense there. I would say it's between um, Williams and or if we're talking only zone corners here. Okay. Well, let's let's move on to what we had talked about. I know you had mentioned safety, and I, I would agree that we need to look at that there. And I've also opened it up to linebacker. Um, Reggie Ragland seemed like he was going to be re- relatively you know, talented in his rookie year, but it looks like he completely fell off uh, after that. Dorian O'Daniel, Anthony Hitchens. So linebacker and safety between those two positions, who are kind of the guys jumping out at you? Well, Mac Wilson, certainly. Um, because of Daniel, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I'm, I think O'Daniel and Hitchens are outside linebackers, correct? Yeah. So you need a guy in the middle. Um, Raglan has flashes here and there, but he doesn't have that type of range that Mac Wilson would give you. Um, so Mac Wilson is, is certainly one of the top guys here, but you're going to have to give him a year or two and really let him, I mean, I would say trial by fire, let him play, but he's he's going to have some issues. He's going to struggle early on, likely. Um and then looking at its safety, Deontay Thompson certainly stands out to me because of the flashes with ball skills early on in this past season and the range. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, a little bit more of a, um, I, I would say, physical guy than Deontay Thompson. Um, I know some people are liking him later on in the first round. So um, it's safety, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Deontay Thompson, and that linebacker, I'm thinking probably Mack Wilson. And I'll throw it for safety as well. I'll throw it to Nasir Adderley, I think. His yeah. range is it, it maybe not. Um, you know, he, he didn't have the same type of competition that Deontay Thompson had. But watching him on tape and, and his athletic testing is going to be great. So I would say Nasir Adderley in that conversation and safety as well. So, um, in terms of let, let's try to narrow this down a little bit. In terms of value of the guys that we've listed, who's who are kind of the top guys that that you think are a great value here for the the Chiefs? Value-wise, I would say Mac Wilson is probably the best value um, compared to how everyone views him. Um, and then it would, number two would be Deontay Thompson. So I know I, I said that in the comment section, cornerback seems to stand out. When I compare that to the lack of talent at safety and linebacker, I feel like cornerback is a much better position. I know. See, and, and here's the other thing. When, you, when you're the Kansas City Chiefs and you're throwing up 40 points, a lot of teams are going to be throwing back at you. They're going to be putting up a lot of points, and I can understand the panic of, we got to stop people from getting all these points. But Kendall Fuller isn't horrible. Steven Nelson isn't horrible. Orlando Scandrick, Traverius Ward. I mean, these guys aren't lockdown corners, but they're much better than you're seeing with, you know, Daniel Sorensen at safety, Dorian O'Daniel and Reggie Raglan at linebacker. So if you threw it back to me and you said either uh, Mac Wilson or DeAndre Baker, personally, you know, and especially for a team that maybe I wouldn't mind getting a little bit more physical, um, I, I, I kind of like the idea of going linebacker here. I don't know exactly what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, and, and Dorian O'Daniel was a third last year, so I'm pretty comfortable with where he's at. Um, you know, you got to give him another year or two. Sure. And then it's, I mean, my thing is Daniel Sorensen at safety is just not viable. I feel like Reggie Raglan, and, and also Deontay Thompson, I think, is way further along in his development than Mac Wilson is. Mac Wilson, you can put him in the center of your defense, but you might pull him in the middle of the year and put Raglan back in if he's okay. struggling. And you're getting to playoff time. Because, like I said, Wilson is going to take some time to really start to build up his game and get to a legitimate pro level in terms of his mental processing. So, so let Thompson, me – oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just, I'm, I just think Thompson's a better value in terms of, like, how he fits with the team. I think he's more important than upgrading on Raglan. Sure. All right. Well, let, let me just throw one, one more – a different way of looking at it, I guess. I, I don't mind the corners, but I would agree that they don't have a true number one. Is there somebody that you can say that comes in and is is, is that number one lockdown guy so that the guys that we have that aren't bad end up being our number two, number three, and then we also have our lockdown guy as our number one? Is that guy available, or are we just kind of adding another top 40, top 50-ish cornerback? You're just adding another top 40 okay. top. I mean, maybe, and I know I, I think... And maybe this was the pick in the in our last uh, in our last draft where I had Julian Love, like I was excited about him potentially going early. But um, I feel like Julian Love, if you're going for a guy who has the upside of cornerback one, I think Julian Love is probably the, your best bet. But again, I don't know if he fits schematically because I think he's more of a man guy. Um, and then Orwarie, but I just think the need is so glaring at safety. Sure. You, you got to go with Thompson. And, and let me throw one fun thing out here, and I know there's zero chance of it happening. It's not possible. You want to just continue to go, you know, nuts. Let's make the offense incredible. Let's go get Marquise Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. 
But no, I would say all day Deontay Thompson at safety here. Yeah, and I, it, I can't imagine that anybody would be super upset if they got Hollywood Brown. That's not what I'm going to do, but I, I, I would imagine that there would be eruptions of cheers. And, and also from the competition, everyone's going, oh, no, how in the world are we going to stop the Chiefs now? But with the 29th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Deontay Thompson, safety, Alabama. So I, I got to be honest, man, I wish we could spend more time talking about the Packers. That's my team. But for the second time in a row, I don't think this could get any easier. And, I, you know, I, we'll, we'll talk about it. We need help at safety. We got Josh Allen, which is just unbelievable at 12. You know, we could try to talk about interior offensive line at guard, you know, maybe linebacker, but I don't, I don't think that's, you know, as glaring of a need. Eventually I want to get to tight end. Because that's exactly where where I want to get to. But let's let's kind of explore, you know, guard or or safety, especially safety. I think safety is actually a really big need. So so what are maybe some of our options there? For the record, uh, it popped in my mind who you're talking about. I already wrote the pick in. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Gardner Johnson and and Adderley are the options at safety. I just don't think the value of either of them comes close to the guy you're thinking of. Yeah, I, I I would agree. Obviously, we're we're uh, we're talking about uh, Devin Singletary running back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> With the 30th uh, pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select T.J. Hawkinson, tight end out of Iowa. Um, so so similar to to Josh Allen, we didn't spend a lot of time talking, but tell me about the Packers' newest tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. Well, Hawkinson is just the complete package. I mean, he's a monstrous blocker. Maybe not a huge guy, but he just runs through people. He annihilates linebackers. He has the mentality of, of an offensive lineman. Um, and then also as a pass catcher, maybe not a special receiver by any means, but you put the ball in his hands, he, he runs tough, picks up yardage, and, and he's reliable. Um, you know, compare him to his teammate Noah Fan. Noah Fan, you're probably using on the outside. I think Hawkinson, you're probably going to be using as an inline guy, but it, he's going to be a, a, I wouldn't say all pro, straight out the gate type of tight end, but. You look at a former Iowa tight end and George Kittle and how successful Kittle has been, I think he's going to be more successful than Kittle was because he has the same type of tenacity as a blocker, but he finishes better, and I think he's a little bit better as a receiver. Nice. I'm excited. So with the 35th first pick now, we've got the uh, the Rams on the clock. I've, I've been pretty consistent in trashing their linebackers, but I've been getting a little bit of pushback in the comment section, so I guess I'll just walk that back. And uh, let, let's explore something else here. With Joyner likely gone at safety, who are your thoughts as, as far as some of the safeties that could possibly come in? And specifically, I'm looking at free safety because we do have a pretty solid, strong safety still on the team. I'm thinking Adderley. I think the range that you give to Adderley is, is certainly an important factor. And Gardner Johnson, while he's a little bit more versatile, I just think Adderley, you could play him as a legit free safety and, and find immediate success. I know everyone's mocking, you know, Mac Wilson and, and Jalen Ferguson. I don't know where the hell that's coming from, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I, I would say that Mr. Adderley probably has the maybe not the highest upside. I think Mac Wilson maybe a little bit more of an upside pick, but I, I just really like Mr. Adderley in terms of the fit. And then um, I, I just want to throw it out there real quick. I'm guessing I know the answer, but is there a three-four outside linebacker that you think that can come in and really kind of be a game changer here? I'm going to scan the list real quick, but my immediate reaction is no, and just no. scanning the list, I'm not seeing I mean, I mentioned him earlier when we were back at, like, pick 20 of DeAndre Walker's the next closest 3-4 outside linebacker I've got, and he's a round three guy for me at, at the earliest. So I would say there's really no, no one there that is a decent option. With the 31st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the L.A. Rams select Nasir Adderley, safety, Delaware. All right, so we made it all the way to the New England Patriots now, um, Super Bowl champions. I, I kind of think, if, if let me let me put it this way, as a GM, I can help you with the pick. I just want to let you take this one. Do whatever you want with it. Have some fun. Get your guy. If you, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, it's all on you. Do you want to recap? Because I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to skim through here yeah. and really consider things. Yeah. Um, well, I'll I'll talk about. Uh, you know, Brady, everybody wants to talk quarterback. I don't know if Patriots fans appreciate that very much, but everybody wants to talk quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. I personally think it's a little bit boring, but we got to consider that, especially considering we've talked about Drew Locke and some of the other people that are here. Probably some good value. 
wide receiver is definitely somebody that we or something that we need to consider you know along the defensive line that you, I'm not exactly sure how many of these guys we're going to be able to retain but I, I think we can make a case for um, looking along the defensive line somewhere whether it be defensive tackle or uh, someone off the edge um, you know Trey Flowers is talented I don't really know again I don't know exactly who's staying and who's going who's getting a franchise tag who's not uh, Lawrence Guy is talented on the interior uh, Danny Shelton is is also a pretty talented guy, but you could make a case for it. Linebackers, I know Patriots fans have have scolded me for saying I don't appreciate their linebackers quite very much, but if there's a great value, you could go that way. Kyle Van Noy is is talented but not elite. Dante Hightower is talented but not elite. Uh, Landon Roberts, same situation. Um, I would say that their corners and safeties are are more or less untouchable, and in my opinion. Um, Devin McCourty, Stephon Gilmore, Jason McCourty, uh, Chung. I, I just I really like the guys that they have at uh, those positions. And offensive line because it's because it's the Patriots. Obviously they they do a great job of blocking for Brady. I don't personally see that as as a real big concern. Um, so that's just sort of how I would break down the team in general. But um, again, I'll I'll turn it over to you. I've kind of come away with with three options here. And I'm going to run them all by you, and then you can let me know which one interests you the most. At, uh, at tight end, we have Noah Fant, who I think yeah. probably the clear-cut number two tight end behind Hawkinson. Gronk getting up there, and he's had some injury issues and hasn't been up to um, his standard performance, so you've got to consider that, I think. At wide receiver, Kelvin Harmon, big-body guy, can go up and get it. I, I think he's certainly an option. J.J. Arkega, wide side, maybe not the physical um, you know, physically dominant guy that Kelvin Harmon is, but I think you get a more refined route runner and someone who can consistently bring it down. I feel like those two guys are good options because Brady doesn't really have that jump ball guy right now. I mean, he has a lot of the smaller guys like Edelman and, and Patterson, but th- those guys aren't, you're not trusting them in any jump ball situations. And then we've got to talk about him because he's on the verge of falling to, to round two right here is Drew Locke. And we need a potential successor to Brady. We haven't invested in that yet. Um, you know, we let Garoppolo go to, to San Francisco, Brissett to Indianapolis, and um, the quarterback behind Brady right now is Brian Hoyer. I feel like it has to be something that we have to discuss. Even if Drew Locke isn't our guy, if we want to, you know, look to the future, I think it, I think we've got to have that discussion and say, is he worth it? Well, yeah, and, and I think um... – even at quarterback, you, if, you know, let's say Tom Brady plays till he's 60 or whatever, we, we still have that conversation of trading him like we did with Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, you'd mentioned that before. You can retain a lot of value if you're able to develop him and not play him. You can still get something for him. As soon as you said Fant, my, my immediate thought was for all the non-Patriots fans, they're going to watch him draft Fant and say, of course they get Noah Fant, right? You know, it's, we're finally seeing the end of an era with Rob Gronkowski and then Fant comes in and it's like, well okay, I guess they get another stud at tight end. So I could see that being a good, you know, although very different types of players, I'm not comparing them to Gronk, but it's it's another very talented tight end that they're going to be able to utilize. Uh, Wide receiver of the group, I would say, is maybe the biggest need. Again, being the non-scout, I'm looking at it going, I feel like they can manage with wide receiver, and I don't know if they're getting a a super big, it, it doesn't have that oh no feel to it, like oh man, that's going to be dominant. So yeah, those those are three pretty tough questions um, as far as instant impact. Fant steps up, steps stands out, I guess in my mind the most. Wide receiver would be second, but then obviously the the prudent move seems to be quarterback at Drew Lock. Even even in terms of value, it feels like he might be the best pick. Well, let's go ahead and just push receiver to the to the back burner, I guess. Okay. And with with tight end and Fant, it's like you said, it's kind of like that oh no, of like okay. You, we're moving on from Gronk, and they go and get Fan. I think, you know, kind of my idea with thinking about wide receiver was Brady just needs someone big he can throw it up to. That's the reality of the situation. There's no one on that team that can be trusted, like I said, as a jump ball guy right now, um, especially with Gronk potentially moving on and into retirement. It's You need somebody that Brady can just toss it up to and trust. I think Fan can be that guy. So if you think Fan can be that guy at tight end, then sure, I mean, it's, it's worth – picking him over a guy like Kelvin Harmon or, or J.J. Arkega Whiteside. But Drew Locke still being there, I feel like, I know you kind of mentioned it, we can retain that value a little bit if we you know, play him sparingly or you know, don't play him at all and, and Brady continues to dominate. But how long do you think Brady has left? Does Brady have you know, 
two years, or does Brady have five years? Well, I, I, I would have thought he was gone by now. I keep thinking he's almost done. And, he, I mean, and, and every year he looks, I don't want to say better than last year because it would be impossible at this point, but he's, he's not dropping off at all. He, he, his ability to come out and do what he's doing, I don't see a drop off. I don't see a lack of desire. I don't see a lack of effort. The concern is there, but I, I, I'm not super worried about it. Um, I, I think for me it really just comes down to similar to what we talk about in f- terms of percentages with Hollywood Brown. If we go away from what the intelligent decision is, which is probably Drew Locke, and we decide to go get Noah Fant, what is your thought in terms of like how much of a slam dunk is it that he's, again, not Gronkowski, but he's going to come in and be probably a... a not just reliable target, but he could be like the guy. He can be a nightmare. He can be the 80 next. 85 Eighty-five. Okay. Eighty to eighty-five, maybe even up towards nine. I think he's he's almost a lot to come in. I wouldn't say be the next Gronk, but be a similarly dominant guy. I, you know, it's it's your pick. I'm gonna defer to you. Um, I have a hard time getting away from Fant just because I know we can do it again. We can go back again and get another one. So it's it that that's just. That's on the tip of it. And beyond that, I feel like as much as it's the prudent move, when Brady's gone, I don't know what the the opportunity of us getting back to the Super Bowl is. That That's just kind of my thought process. I'm, I'm, I want to go back. I want to get another one. And then next year I want to get another one. And I feel like Fant is going to be the one that can do that. And Drew Locke is not. That, that's exactly where I was heading in my mind of like, Brady, let's say he has two, three years. Well, if you take Drew Locke, then you potentially burn a, a path to another ring or two rings or three rings or however many years Brady has left. However long Brady has left, you have a path to a ring. Um, and I feel like getting fan would certainly assist in that. So if you're going all in as the Patriots and saying, let's get Brady as many rings as we can and, and go out on top and, you know, we're going to have this happy ending of, you know, Belichick and Brady off in the sunset with two more rings, I think you go fan here. I just think Locke is Locke is the future pick, and I don't think the Pats are going to look for the future beyond Tom Brady, at least not at this point. So let's say Noah Fan at number 32, and they're trying to get back to the Super Bowl. With the 32nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Noah Fan, tight end, Iowa. I, I, I felt pretty good about it, man. I felt pretty good about a lot of those picks. I feel like there were some guys that maybe fell a little bit. Obviously, as a Packer fan, I know there's not going to be any complaints from them. If they are, they can just go ahead and <laughs> they can turn in their Packers fan card. But, no, I, I really enjoyed it. I feel like we did a good job for these teams. Um, again, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know not only what you think about the pick, but just in general. When we do this again, I want to know uh, some of the team needs that you guys have. Type in the, the team name and then give me your thoughts on it. Otherwise, man, once again, I really, really appreciate it. You can check out Mark at what's on nfldraft.com be sure to follow him on twitter uh as for myself nflbigboard.com otherwise we'll be back very shortly i'm excited to, to to do a few more of these with mark otherwise you folks enjoy your time mark thanks a lot for for stopping back again thanks for having me all right take it easy